Hello everyone, my name is Kiran Chaudhary and I am your botany faculty at Infinity Learn. Today in this session, my lovely kids, we will be discussing about all 50 questions from botany that you gave, you appeared on 13th of July in Grantus 10. So let's see what are those questions, my dear students, and what are the correct answers. So we'll start with the very first question and the first question reads, it's from your chapter 1. The living world, class 11, all living organisms. So it's asking about all living organisms means asking about the defining properties. The properties, the characteristics that define an, a particular object is living or not. So all living organisms reproduce. No, my dear students, there are exceptions in living organism itself like infertile human Couples, right my dear students they do not reproduce grow indefinitely no when we talk about animals we do not grow indefinitely next exhibit metabolism yes this is in fact defining feature of living organism we all without any exception all living organism exhibit metabolism which is sum of catabolism and anabolism this is the right answer they possess sense organs sense organ is also some which is not found in all living organisms especially the lower ones next main match the following okay so here you have my dear students in column 2 there are elements and on Column 1, there are properties, right? So if we talk about, my dear students, carboxylase. Carboxylase is an enzyme which will have zinc as the catalyst, right? Osmoticum. Now, if you notice, my dear students, it is actually potassium that will help in osmosis. That means, if you remember in guard cells, my dear students, uh, if you remember, my dear students, in stomata, there are guard cells, opening and closing of stomata, incoming of the water and withdrawal of the water, it is controlled by the exchange of K plus and H plus ions. Okay. So, potassium helps in osmosis, osmotic entry of water inside a cell like guard cells and opening of stomata binding of ribosome units so the smaller and the larger subunit of ribosome is bounded with the help of specific concentration of magnesium immobile element calcium is an example of immobile element so if i see my kids i hope this blue color is visible to everybody just let me know if blue color is not visible okay is blue color visible let me know in the chat box okay so, A goes with 2, B goes with 4, C goes with 3 and D goes with 1. So, your option 1 is in fact correct. Next, in a flowering plant, the substance that need to be transported is or are. So, let us find out what are the substances that need to be transported inside a plant body. Water and minerals, definitely organic nutrients yes that is also true and plant growth regulators yes because where they are formed my dear students it's not always not the case they will be utilized at the same place they need to be transported uh, to the areas where their action is required so water and mineral nutrients organic nutrients and plant growth regulators all need to be transported inside a plant body so your answer four is correct so again match the column this is from your chapter 11, class 11, transport in plants. As glucose is prepared, this is from your phloem transport. As glucose is prepared at the source by photosynthesis, who is the source? Leaf. Where photosynthesis will take place, glucose will be synthesized and it will be transported in form of sucrose. It is then moved into from leaf, from source cell, my dear students, it will be moved to the companion cell. From companion cell, to the sieve tube and this loading is going to be active as well as unloading at the sink is also going to be active please remember this okay so it is need to be moved at companion cell into sieve tube cells by an active process let me match it out again as glucose is prepared the source by photosynthesis it is moved into a companion cell and then into sieve tube cells and that is an active transport. So I hope you got the answer over here. Next question. 
synoptimal complex hmm, this question is from your my lovely kids your cell division right meiosis so synoptimal complex is formed between two homologous chromosomes homologous chromosomes pairs right formation of synoptimal complex takes place during zygotene stage then in the next packetine stage they will undergo crossover and finally in the diplotene stage my dear students diplotene stage starts with dissolution of this synoptimal complex so a synoptimal complex is formed during zygotene and dissolves during diplotene so your answer to should be correct so formation will take place in zygotene and dissolution dissolve during diplotene pretty simple yes next question what is not true regarding a pea plant let's find out pea plant my dear students it is a member of fabaceae please remember this okay so papilinaceous papilinaceous corolla that's in fact right there will be a there are five petals right there will be a big large standard petal then there will be two lateral petals known as wings and there will be two fused small uh, in the anterior two petals will be there right uh, then that's right it's papilinaceous corolla or vexillary also you can say di adelphi that's right the stamens total <coughs> Sorry, the stamens total in it are actually 10. 9 will be in one bundle and another one, the tenth one will be separate, my dear students. So it is a diadolphus condition. Two bundles. Stamens are arranged in two bundles. That's absolutely right. Stem tendril is not found in P, my lovely kid. Stem tendril in found in actually your watermelon, pumpkin, cucumber, grape wines like that. But if we talk about P, P also has tendril, but those tendrils are modification of leaf, but not the stem, right? So this was a catch over here. Marginal placentation ovules in pea plant are arranged, my dear students, along the ridge. So there's a ventral suture and there's a ridge and over the ridge, the ovules are arranged. Marginal placentation, that's absolutely correct. So only third option is incorrect. Parthenogenesis is observed in all. So if you're wondering from where this question has been framed, this is from your chapter number one, class 12, reproduction in organisms, right? In uh, sexual reproduction, this portion has been discussed after fertilization. So parthenogenesis is observed in all, except it will be turkey birds, right? Lizard, right? Banana. In banana, instead of parthenogenesis, parthenocarpi is seed. It's a fruit. Parthenocarpi se ye banega. Honeybees, yeah, right. So turkey, lizards, and turkey birds, uh, lizards and honeybees, right for parthenogenesis. But for banana, it should not be parthenogenesis. It should be parthenocarpi. So I hope you got that catch in this question. Which kingdom in Whitaker's classification is further divided into two kingdoms by Carl Woos in his six kingdom classification? So please remember my dear students, Carl Woos classification system, it included three domains in which there were six kingdoms in all. So what did he do? He divided the kingdom Monera of R.H. Whitaker into two separate domains right my dear students so kingdom monera is actually separated into two different kingdoms one he named as archaea and another was bacteria next so this monera is divided into two kingdom one okay column one and column two so this question is from your plant growth regulators Terpene. So they are asking about what are the chemical nature of the PGR. So if you talk about my dear students, terpenes, your gibber lens are actually terpenes chemically, carotenoids, abscisic acid, purines, if I say my dear students, purines are cytokinins or kinetins, indol, acid, indol compounds are your auxins. So let's see which matches with the which one. Uh, terpenes, A will match with two. So A matches with two, carotenoids matches with four, and C, purines matches with cytokinin and indole compounds matches with auxins. So I guess three should be your answer. Let's recheck. A, two, B, carotenoids, four, ABA, purines is cytokinin and indole compounds are auxin. Yeah. Let's see the next question. Which of the following marine algae Alga, the plant body, simple, branched, filamentous with mannitol as the reserve food material. So remember with this 
point only it should be clear reserve food material is mannitol which is seen my dear students in members of brown algae now out of the four option can you tell me which one is brown algae pretty simple eulothrix is green algae spirogyra green algae porphyra is the red algae only ectocarpus is the brown algae and ectocarpus is the one who is simple branched right it is simply branched it is not profusely branched like the other members of brown algae which you term them as kelp macrocystis etc right so this answer is ectocarpus and it was pretty simple also only one member is brown algae and rest all are of different groups match this is again from plant kingdom polysiphonia funaria cycas aquisetum these are the plants my dear students and here are their characteristics polysiphonia so can you recollect what is polysiphonia it's a member of red algae and in members of red algae in their life cycle no motile stage is seen whether you talk about asexual reproduction or sexual reproduction it will take place with the help of non motile structures so here here you see my dear students here there's one option asexual spores are non motile this matches with the red algae polysiphonia funaria funaria is an example of a bryophyte my dear students an example of moss so in funaria what you can see protonema so in funaria my dear students it's a bryophyte the main plant body is gametophyte in it and the gametophyte of mosses has two stages right the protonema stage and the second stage is actually the leafy gametophyte so when the haploid spore of moss germinates it first formed a filamentous green branch structure known as protonema now then on protonema there's a formation of a bud on the lateral side which further develops into a gametophyte so this is what takes place inside moss which is a funaria protonema structure the first stage of the gametophyte next is cycas which is a gymnosperm in cycas my dear students special roots are found known as corolloid roots where my dear students nitrogen fixation takes place so cycas is associated with the corolloid roots next is my lovely kids aquisetum aquisetum is an example of a pteridophyte and yes in aquisetum is one such in in some members listen this in some or in few members of pteridophyte the sporophylls are compactly arranged to form a cone like structure my dear students also known as strobilus or strobili so it it is seen in aquisetum so let's match now polysiphonia a goes with 4 so a goes with 4 with many uh funaria goes with b goes with 3 b goes with 3 c goes with 1 and d goes with 2 let me recheck again a goes with 4 b goes with 3 C goes with one and D goes with two. So your first option is absolutely correct. Now let's see the next one. Actinomorphic symmetry, variation in the length of the filament of stamens, and parietal placentation are seen in the flowers of. So listen, my dear students, if you see these characteristics, these are actually the characteristics of Brassicaceae. And one such member of Brassicaceae that you can see over here. is the mustard so mustard is a plant belonging to brassicaceae and brassicaceae uh, plants have in in them the flowers are actinomorphic and they have variations in the length of the flower in the filament of so so if you see my dear students this is the ovary this is the ovary and this is how the stamens are arranged in two right if you remember my dear students the stamens the enrosium are arranged like this so they have difference in the length of the filament right so this is actually known as tetradynamous condition of the androsium when androsium or when the stamens are actually of different length it is seen in mustard with parietal placentation right next question in a pinnately compound leaf leaflets are present on either sides of the rachis yes my dear students in compound leaf leaf what happened the incision incision reaches to the midrib so in pinnately compound my dear students there will be leaves like this in a pinnately compound leaf axillary buds are present in the axil of leaflet so this is very important in the axil of leaflets axillary buds are not found so axillary बर्ड विल नॉट बी प्रेजेंट इन द एक्सिल ऑफ लीफ लेट्स लीफ के एक्सिल में होता है लीफ लेट्स भी नहीं सो ए इज राइट बट बी इज रॉन्ग सो ए इज करेक्ट ए इज करेक्ट 
but R is incorrect, right? So in a pinnately compound leaf, leaflets are present on either side of the rachis, that's right. In a, pin, in a pinnately compound leaf, axillary buds are present in the axil of the leaf. So, next question, which can be represented in a floral formula but not in a floral diagram? Let's check out astivation. Yes, perfectly astivation. You can definitely see my dear students, right? Whether it is of what type velvet hair, right? Twisted hair, imbricate hair, vexillary hair. This we can easily see. Placentation can also be seen if you notice Liliaceae ki family ba aapko pata chalta hai ki three ovaries hai, fused hai, right? Uhi tarikhe se aapko Solanaceae, Fabaceae mein bhi dikhta hi hai, Brassicaceae mein dikhta hai. Um, position of ovary of the gynosium, yes. So, gynosium is superior or inferior that cannot be presented in the floral diagram. Like in, in the floral formula, you can easily write like this, right? So, this is means superior ovary and this means inferior ovary. So, superior ovary, inferior ovary, you can't show in the floral diagram, but you can show in the floral formula. So, which can be represented in the floral formula but not in floral diagram, it is position of ovary of the gynosium. Number of sepals you can easily tell. Next question, match, choose the mismatch from the following, okay. Mustard, mustard is a member of Brassicaceae and they definitely have four sepals if you remember the floral diagrams. Yes, sahi hai. Onion. Onion is a member of Liliaceae, my dear students. Instead of petals and sepals separately, they have tepals. And yeah, definitely, if you if you remember the floral diagram, right, my dear students, it's look like this. It looks like this, like this, like this. So there are six tepals fused, three plus three, right? And this is also right. So six tepals, right? Four sepals, right? McCoy. McCoy is a member of Solanaceae. Solanum nigrum, it has two carpals, yes, two pistils are there, syncarpus condition. Um, single P, single stamen in a flower, no, we have already done this. P ka condition hai, di adolphus. So in P, my dear students, if I talk about androsium, it is 9 plus 1. So 9 members in one bundle and one in another, di adolphus condition. So single stamen nahi hota hai, this one is wrong. Statement A and statement 2, dinitrogenase is exclusively a prokaryote enzyme. So, we are talking about dinitrogenase means the nitrogenase enzyme that is required to catalyze the bio, uh, biological fixation of the nitrogen. So, N2 ka ammonia mein, N2 ka ammonia mein jo conversion hai, that's in the presence of this dinitrogenase enzyme which is an exclusive property of the prokaryotes. Remember in your NCRT in a, one of the leguminous plant like soya bean, uh, this nitrogen fixation is explained with the help of a rhizobium bacteria in which this dinitrogenase is present and dinitrogenase if we talk about this is an enzyme, it is a protein and it includes iron and molybdenum. It is an iron molybdenum protein. So dinitrogenase is exclusive property of prokaryote enzyme, that is right. Dinitrogenase is an iron molybdenum protein functional under anaerobic condition. That's absolutely correct, my dear students. Dinitrogenase is actually sensitive towards the molecular oxygen. Therefore, uh, in order to maintain the anaerobic condition in the vicinity of dinitrogen so that it remains in its active form, leg hemoglobin play its role. Leg hemoglobin is the scavenger of the oxygen. It will eat up the available oxygen in the vicinity of the dinitrogenase and maintain the anaerobic condition for smooth and efficient biological nitrogen fixation to take place. So statement 1 is correct and statement 2 is also correct. Dinitrogen is an iron molybdenum protein function under anaerobic condition. So both 1 and 2 are correct. Next question, uh, spores are only wall structure and get dispersed by wind. So please notice, let me see the options, algae, slime mold, fungi and cyanobacteria. Okay, so if you notice my dear students, algae, fungi, cyanobacteria, they all have wall in their body, right? But if you talk about slime mold, slime mold is a member of protista and in them, uh, in acellular and cellular slime mold, in both these forms, my dear students, cell wall is not present. But whenever there is unfavorable condition, my dear students, there's formation of fruiting bodies, right? Fruiting bodies has spores in it. Those spores contains true walls, true cell walls made up of cellulose. So, 
Spores are the only wall structure and get dispersed by the wind. This is a characteristic of slime mold. This line is given in NCRT. Please remember this. Next question. PS2 is not associated with okay water uh, stromal lamellae yes that's right stromal lamellae possess just ps1 so over stromal lamellae only cyclic photophosphorylation can take place not non cyclic because for non cyclic photophosphorylation to run ps1 and ps2 both are required ps2 is not associated with water no it is associated with water splitting complex so the electrons that we uh, get by splitting the water that are given to PS2 to remove its electron deficiency. Non-cyclic definitely it is photochemical phase. It is a part of photochemical phase. So PS2 is not associated with stromal lamellae. They are absent there. Next question, statement 1 and statement 2. Okay, so high aspartic acid in maize protect it from corn borer. This is in fact correct. Now let me complete this statement in NCRT in plant breeding in chapter 9 class 12 it is given that high aspartic acid, low nitrogen and sugar are responsible my dear students to protect the maize from the borers, corn borers. Next, biofortified maize is rich in lysine and tryptophan. That is right my dear students, biofortified maize has been produced in which the amount of lysine and tryptophan amino acid is just double than the normal species than the normal variety rather i should say okay so this both are correct high aspartic acid in maize protected from the corn borer and bio fortified maize is rich in lysine and tryptophan both a both one and two are correct both one and two are correct let's see the next question which of the following is not a fungal household product? Bread, yes, from a fungi. You already know that. Saccharomyces cerevisiae, toddy also from the fungi. Ripened cheese, yes. If you remember, my dear students, penicillium, camembert, penicillium, roqueforti, making the roquefort cheese. Curd is actually, my dear students, prepared by lactic acid bacteria, lab bacteria, right? So curd is a product produced from lab lactic acid bacteria. Next question, what is true in members of gymnosperm? So let's find out which of the following characteristic is true for gymnosperm. They are paras they have parasitic gametophyte. That's right, my dear students, male and female gametophyte. They are produced over the parent sporophytic body. The gametophytic generation do not possess independent, the gametophytic generation in gymnosperm is not at all independent they are retained on the parent body and this is also one of the reason which is leading to the seed habit in the gymnosperm which was absent in till pteridophyte next is xerophytic habitat yes and their leaves are well adapted to survive in the xerophytic condition archegonia yes so archegonia will be produced inside the ovule in gymnosperm all these are straight from ncrt so all these are correct all these are Correct. All the above are correct. Okay, so this question is from your biotechnology. So flat blade impeller. So you will be able to answer this question very nicely if you can observe that diagram in biotechnology principle and procedures, right? So flat blade impeller is a part of my lovely kids agitator system. Air bubbles you can see in the spark stirred bioreactor, sterile air for oxygen delivery system and clinical trials are required in the downstream processing. So let's match out one goes with B, one goes with B, two goes with D, two goes with D, sterile air goes with C and clinical trials grow with A. So let me check it again for you guys. 1 goes with B, 2 goes with, 2 goes with D, 3 goes with C and 4 goes with the A, right? I hope this is clear, pretty simple. Next question. New cells are always being added to the plant body by the activity of the meristem and this is called open form of growth. Straight line from a chapter number 15, class 11. Uh, plant growth and development in the growth part one of the few paragraphs initial paragraphs 
plant retain the capacity for unlimited growth throughout their life yes because of the activity of the meristem so both these lines are given over there so these both are correct so both the statement 1 and 2 are correct new cells are always being added to the plant body by the activity of the meristem this is called open form of growth and plant retain the capacity for unlimited growth throughout their life because of this activity of the meristem both the statement 1 and 2 are right correct next question if a thylo or yeah so this is a little logical question my dear students let me help you out in understanding this if a thylakoid membrane is punctured it would have a direct effect of so please do not get confused you need to understand here the importance of the word direct direct effect kis pe aayega sabse pehle first what is the step which activity is going to get affected for the first at first right so if you notice my dear students if thylakoid membrane inside thylakoid membrane there's a production of proton gradient right so please notice over here there's a difference there's a difference of h plus ion concentration that is created when you move from stroma to the lumen of the thylakoid we're talking about a chloroplast chloroplast have stroma and thylakoids right so there's a h plus ion concentration difference when you move from stroma to thylakoid in the lumen of the thylakoid so lumen of the thylakoid will have more concentration of h plus ion in comparison to the stroma this helps in building of the proton gradient which is very much required for the formation of atp molecules according to the chemi osmotic hypothesis given by peter mitchell so if you notice my dear students if this particular membrane of the thylakoid will be punctured that means easily h plus ions can move out back from thylakoid to the stroma so if this is going to happen there won't be formation of enough proton gradient required for the atp synthesis so the direct direct role or effect it will have will be on atp synthesis because it requires building of the proton gradient which will not be able to form because the membrane of the thylakoid is punctured next question how many are dominant traits selected by mendel in pea plant what you what simple you can expect from this chapter other than this question right so dwarf is a recessive character violet flower color is dominant axial flower position is also dominant wrinkled is recessive and inflated pod is actually dominant so how many are dominant 1 2 and 3 so second option is correct next question my lovely kids pick the correct combination of gaseous cycles and sedimentary cycle from the list given below so gaseous or sedimentary ka aapko batana hai gaseous and sedimentary from the list give below okay to so thoda sa isme kya ho gaya bachcho let me tell you uh, idhar gaseous aana tha aur idhar sedimentary aana tha so alignment error hai usme so which one is gaseous carbon and nitrogen is gaseous right and which was is sedimentary phosphorus and sulfur is sedimentary very right carbon and nitrogen gaseous phosphorus and sulfur is sedimentary i hope this much is pretty simple and clear next question addition of inorganic phosphates and removal of redox equivalents is seen during the formation of 1,3 by phosphoglyceric acid in glycolysis acetyl coa in link reaction alpha ketoglutaric acid in krebs cycle and reductive amination so if you see my dear students in all the four option only in first option addition of inorganic phosphate and formation of nadh plus h plus if you are not able to understand the question let me tell you addition of inorganic phosphate means addition of inorganic phosphate this pi and removal of redox equivalents this in simple language means formation of nadh plus h plus molecules right let me write that again so removal of redox equivalents in simple terms means formation of nadh plus h plus molecules right so if you notice my dear students during glycolysis right from 3 pgal phosphoglyceraldehyde whenever an aldehyde is changing into an acid that is phosphoglyceric acid there is removal of nadh plus h plus and also there is addition of inorganic phosphate and the source is not atp here the source is 
phosphoric acid right h3po4 is is the source of inorganic phosphate so phosphate is added inorganic phosphate and there's a formation of nadh plus h plus because there's a removal of the redox equivalence when aldehyde phosphoglyceric aldehyde is converted into phosphoglyceric acid right 1,3 and that is why there is 2 phosphate now at that time it is my dear students 3 pga now it is 1,3 by pga addition of inorganic phosphate and formation of nadh plus h plus molecules why because there is a removal of redox equivalence during this process pretty simple you can see from ncrt itself in the glycolysis this is mentioned like that suberin is present in the walls of except suberin is my dear students water repellent so if suberin get deposited water cannot flow so it will seal that surface so suberin is present in the cell wall of except cork cell endodermis of the root and phylum yes my dear students if you notice only one option is this meristematic cells meristematic cells are actively dividing cells they cannot have suberin in it right their function is to just keep on div dividing so cork cells endodermis of the root if you remember casparian strips are made up of and phylum is actually my dear students part of this first one so that's pretty simple cork cells are part of phylum this is pretty simple pretty simple there's no nothing that you need to uh, get confused over here meristematic cells next question prothallus so my dear students what do you understand by prothallus prothallus is actually a gametophyte this term is used in plant kingdom for pteridophyte so in pteridophyte my dear students although the main plant body is sporophyte right whenever the haploid spores they fall on the soil and they come in contact with the soil when there is favorable condition they germinate to form a gametophytic body known as prothallus which is small but multicellular inconspicuous uh, free living independent and mostly photosynthetic it will bear male and female reproductive organs which will form male and female gametes so prothallus is a gametophyte of fern because fern is a member of pteridophyte next question okay so this is also from ncrt plant virus with single stranded rna is your tobacco mosaic viruses it is given in your chapter number 2 biological classification virus viroids wala part last topic bacterio phase with single stranded rna is the qb1 this is given in your chapter number 6 molecular basis of inheritance right my dear students of class 12 and bacterio phases with double stranded dna it is the lambda phase and bacterio phase it with single stranded dna it is the 5174 so this is given in the first paragraph of dna structure of the polynucleotide chain right so let me see this now plant with single stranded rna tmv plant viruses with single stranded rna tmv bacterio phases with single stranded rna qb bacterio phases with double stranded dna is lambda bacterio phases with single stranded dna is the 5174 so let us see now a goes with 3 b goes with 2 c goes with 4 and d goes with 1 let me check it again for you 1 3 b 2 c Four and D goes with one. Yeah. Next question: Which of production of sperms from microspore wound healing and restoration of karyocytoplasmic ratio is seen by? So the answer is in the first uh, part of the question itself. If you see, production of sperm from a microspore. Microspore already haploid hota hai. Right? Just formed from meiosis and microspore mother cell. So microspore se sperm banana hai. It means you need to do mitosis because sperm is also male gamete and it's a haploid so it will happen via mitosis wound healing takes place via mitosis karyoplasmic index ratio can be restored via mitosis so answer is very simple mitosis right from the first part of the question itself you can get the answer mitosis unrelated to law of dominance let's check out law of dominance characters are controlled by discrete units called factor that is according to law of, yes law of dominance said that factors occur in pair this is also law of dominance in it is mentioned in a dissimilar pair of factor let's say capital t and small t one member 
of the pair dominates the other. Yes, capital T dominates the small t in a heterozygous condition. Alleles do not show any blending. This is also right, but this is not according to law of dominance. This is according to law of segregation. So this point is explained under law of segregation. So that is why it is unrelated. It's not wrong. Huh? It's unrelated to law of dominance because this was separately explained by Mendel, my dear students, under law of segregation. Alleles do not show blending, unrelated to law of dominance. Which of the following process represent the dominance of RNA world? This question is from your chapter number 6, Molecular Basis of Inheritance, chapter class 12, right? So, splicing, my dear students, what is splicing, my dear students? So, if you remember, my dear students, in eukaryotic genes, if I talk about, my dear students, during transcription process, First of all, HNRNA primary transcript is formed, then that HNRA undergoes splicing, capping, tailing, etc. During splicing, there is removal of the introns from the exons and further the exons are added in a specific manner. They are ligated, right? So this process is known as splicing and it takes place with the help of the spliceosome. So splicing actually represents the dominance of RNA world. It shows that major important metabolic processes, the reactions, important phenomena are revolving around RNA like splicing, like metabolism, like translation, protein formation, X transcription, etc. So which of the following process represent the dominance of RNA world? It is splicing directly given in NCRT if you read out. Pomato, it is a product of somatic hybridization, protoplasm of potato and tomato fuse. So potato is a product of somatic hybridization. Which one among the following is present in a bacterial cell? Bacteria is a prokaryote. Histones are present? No, it's a part of eukaryotic cell. Nuclear membrane? No. They do not have well defined nucleus. Their DNA is concentrated in a region known as nucleate, which is not surrounded by nuclear membrane. This is a prop nuclear presence of nuclear membrane is a is a property of eukaryotic cell. Genetic material, yes, they will have genetic material which will not be bounded by the nuclear membrane. Membrane bound organelles are not found in prokaryotes. This is a property of eukaryotic cells. So genetic material to in zarur hoga. Match. Yeah. So this is from your anatomy. Bully form cells is a characteristic of monocot. Leaf, water storing cells, the other. Guard cells uh, is a part of epidermal tissue system. Starchy sheath is present in the endodermal cells of the dicot stem. Next, differentiated mesophyll into spongy and palisade is it is a part of a dicot leaf. It is a part of a dicot leaf. Such, such differentiation of mesophyll into spongy and palisade is not seen in monocot leaf, right? So let's see bulliform cells, monocot leaf. Guard cells, epidermal tissue system, starchy sheath in the endodermis of the dicot stem and differentiated mesophyll into spongy and palisade, it is a character of dicot leaf. So one goes with C, two goes with B, starchy sheath, three goes with A and fourth go with D. So this is right, right? One with C, 2, with B, A, and fourth with D, yeah. Next question kids, water storing cavities, fibrovascular bundles, and sclerenchymatous hypodermis are seen in the anatomy of, pretty simple, from this water storing cav cavities, it should pop up in your mind, it is monocot stem, monocot stem, right, very simple. Water storing uh, cavities, fibrovascular bundles, and sclerenchymatous hypodermis is seen in the anatomy of monocot stem. Next question. Which of the following is correct? Okay, low temperature destroys the enzyme by causing the denaturation. No, denaturation takes place under high temperature. This is a character of low uh, high temperature. High temperature preserves the enzyme in inactive stage. No, this is a character of low temperature. So, ye first and two mix kar diye hai. Enzyme catalyze biochemical reaction by increasing the activation energy by lowering the activation energy. All biomolecules participating in metabolic pathways have a turnover. Right, my dear students, all biomolecules uh, taking part in metabolic processes, my dear students, call it lipid, call it proteins, right? Carbohydrates, nucleic acid, all these biomolecules have a particular lifespan in which they remain active and after that time they will break, they will disintegrate. So all biomolecules participating in metabolic pathway have a turnover, that's right. 
which of the following is correct with respect to the compound in acid soluble pool they are called bio correct you need to find out they are called bio macromolecules okay yes their molecular weight is around okay they include nucleic acid no my dear students they are actually the question is actually which of the following is correct with respect to the compound in acid soluble pool ke bare mein bol raha hai to ye jo characters hai Uh, they are called bio macro molecules their molecular weight is around 10000 dalton they include nucleic acids and lipids my dear students this is not with respect to acid soluble pool so the characteristics they have molecular weight ranging from 18 to 800 dalton yes so the last statement only correlates or it is a property of the compounds the molecules that are found in acid soluble pool the question is about the compounds that you found in acid substances you found in acid soluble pool their molecular weight ranges from 18 to 800 dalton so this is the only statement which is true for the acid soluble pool molecules or compounds found in it rest all do not matches with that okay next question choose the correct statement photo respiration takes place in that no 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 it takes place when there is very high light intensity c3 pathway occurs in only c3 plants no my dear students c3 pathway to sabhi type ke plants mein hota hai call it c4 chem etc active site of rubisco can bind to co2 but not to o2 no rubisco is my dear students carboxylase oxygenase dono property hai dono se bind kar sakta hai depend karega partial pressure kiska zyada hai par zyada more affinity it has towards the co2 फोटो रेस्पिरेशन इन्वॉल्व रिलीज ऑफ सीओ टू एंड यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ ए टू पी तभी यह फोटो रेस्पिरेशन है रिलीज ऑफ सीओ टू एंड यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ ए टू पी दैट्स एब्सोल्यूटली करेक्ट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन द टर्म कॉम्पिटेंट रेफर्स टू इंक्रीजिंग द कॉम्पिटिशन बिटवीन सेल्स मेकिंग द सेल्स इनपरमेबल टू द डी एन ए इंक्रीजिंग द एफिशियंसी विद विच डी एन ए एंटर्स इन टू द बैक्टीरियम थ्रू पोर्स इन इट सेल वॉल मेकिंग सेल्स परमिएबल फॉर डाई वैलेंट कैथाइंस नॉ लिसन दिस माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज लाइक द रिकॉम्बिनेट डी एन ए दैट यू हैव ऑलरेडी प्रिपेयर नाउ यू हैव टू इनपुट इट इन टू द होस्ट सेल सो हाउ विल यू मेक द होस्ट सेल कॉम्पिटेंट सो वन ऑफ द वन ऑफ द मेथड इज यू ट्रीट द host let's say if the host is e coli it will have cell wall and cell membrane right so first the recombinant dna has to cross the cell wall and then only it will be able to enter into the cell right crossing the cell membrane so notice my dear students first of all you need to treat the host like for example e coli with a specific concentration of divalent cation like let's say calcium c2 ca2 plus after that what will happen the uh, the recombinant dna will be able to cross the or will be able to enter inside the structure in the e coli by passing through the pores in the pores in the cell wall now after that my dear students in order that recombinant dna can enter into the cell by crossing the cell membrane remember dna is a hydrophilic substances dna is a hydrophilic substances and the plasma membrane is hydrophobic because it is made up of lipids and lipids are non polar they are hydrophobic so it won't allow dna to be absorbed so that it can enter inside the cell it won't happen like that so for that what you need to do is you need to have a cycle of first you need to treat it with the you have to you have to give incubate the e coli the host my dear students in low temperature on ice and then you have to give the heat shock at 42 degrees centigrade and again you have to transfer it to the ice so by doing all these activities finally the recombinant dna will be absorbed by the host cell so yes the third option is right increasing the efficiency with which dna enters the bacterium through pores in its cell wall so that's how the host is made competent the activated toxin from cry gene binds to the surface of the midgut epithelium cells of the insect pest leading to the swelling and lysis of the cell and making the pest die bt cotton is made resistant to insect pest by addition of the cry gene into its genome both the statements are correct statement 1 and statement 2 both are correct which of the following is an incorrect statement transcription follows principle of complementarity very correct in replication only a segment of dna only one of the two strand is copied this is not a characteristic of replication this is a characteristic of transcription in replication both the strands entirely are copied so this is wrong incorrect hi pucha hai aapse terminator is located at the 3 dash end of the coding strand so yes according to the coding strand the positions are given and terminator at the 3 dash end 
UTR untranslated regions are required for efficient translation process. This is correct. Only incorrect one is two because this is a character of not replication but of transcription. Two gametophytic structure one in another is observed in ovule in embryo sac. So ovule represents sporophytic generation. Embryo sac represent the gametophytic generation. Seed represent the sporophytic generation. Embryo represent my dear students also. स्पोरोफाइटिक एम्ब्रियो भी तो किससे बनेगा जाइगोट है जाइगोट टू एन एम्ब्रियो भी टू एन होगा सीड एम्ब्रियो से ही बनेगा वो भी टू एन होगा पोलन ग्रेन पोलन ग्रेन इज हेप्लॉइड पोलन एंड ग्रेन इज फॉर्म फ्रॉम अ माइक्रोस्पोर विच इज इट सेल्फ अप्लॉइड एंड स्पॉम इज फॉर्म वेन जनरेटिव सेल इन साइड अ पोलन ग्रेन विच इज इट सेल्फ इज हेप्लॉइड वेन इट अंडर गोज माइटोसिस इट प्रोड्यूस टू मेल गामिट स्पर्म सो पोलन ग्रेन इज ऑल्सो हेप्लॉइड स्पर्म इज ऑल्सो हेप्लॉइड Flower in a plant. Flower is diploid. Plant is also diploid because angiospermic or sporophyte is the main plant body. So two gametophytic structure one in the another. It is pollen grain with sperm. So sperm is a gametophytic sperm represent gametophytic generation. It is present inside pollen grain which also represent the gametophytic generation because both these are haploid. Next question. So sperm, pollen grain with sperm is the two gametophytic structures one in the another. match pretty simple from your chapter 1 class 12 reproduction in organism tortoise life span is 100 to 150 years crow is 15 years fruit fly 45 to 60 days crocodile 60 years right so a goes with 3 b crow goes with 15 years 4 fruit fly 2 okay so tortoise with 3 b goes with 4 c goes with 2 and d crocodile goes with one so your fourth option is correct next question uh, pressure potential is more positive to for xylem vessel plasmolysis cell turgid cell and flaccid cell so the answer is my dear students turgid cell because what happens my lovely kids in a turgid cell this is your turgid cell so water is entering into it right making it turgid so osmotic entry of water makes a plant cell turgid and this osmotic entry of water leads to development of a value of positive pressure potential right so turgid cell has more positive value of pressure potential dna resist changes by evolving a process of repair due to its so dna has double stranded nature and complementary base pairing rule which enables it to resist changes uh, dna resist changes by evolving a process of repair so both 1 and 2 are absolutely correct this is important please remember having double stranded nature and complementary base pairing rule through this they are able to resist changes by evolving a process of repair next question Water is not required for fertilization in cladophora. It is required. Cladophora is an algae. In algae, water is required for fertilization. Pollination in Wallacea. It is an example of epihydrophily. So, यहाँ तो चाहिए ही होगा pollen grains को पहुँचने के लिए to the stigma. Seed production in Pisum. Pisum is a terrestrial plant. It do not require water for making the pollen grain come in contact with the pistil so it will not happen like that and moreover pisum is a bisexual flower also and uh, cell elongation do require water so seed production in pisum do not require water rest all will require which character is a unique for human self consciousness is unique for human consciousness is found in all living organism but self consciousness is unique to humans sense organs organ system respiratory organs these are not the unique property humans will have but these are not the unique property unique property of humans is self consciousness sickle cell anemia is a result of frame shift transition transversion or aneuploid see students sickle cell anemia is a case of substitution type of a mutation where glutamic acid is substituted by valine at the sixth position of the beta chain of hemoglobin molecule right my dear students and it happens because of exchange between a and t exchange between a and t a is the purine and t is the thymine so whenever purine and sorry purine and pyridine i wanted to write so same thing only i wrote over here so this is purine 
and this is pyrimidine. So A is purine and T is pyrimidine. So because of this exchange of purine and pyrimidine, this is substitution, my dear students. And substitution is also of two type: transition and transversion. So transition me kya hota hai? Transition me matlab purine se purine replace ho jaye, substitute ho jaye. Ya pyrimidine is substituted by pyrimidine. But when we talk about transversion, in transversion what happened? Purine and pyrimidine they get actually substituted. So hence the answer is transversion. Sickle cell anemia is, a, is an example of substitution type of mutation. Substitution type of mutation is of two type transversion and transition. In transition purine purine substitute or pyrimidine pyrimidine are substituting right but we talk about transversion purine is substituting with the pyrimidine which is happening over here A and T ke beech mein substitution hai, which leads to sickle cell anemia my dear student and aneuploidy is because of non-disjunction of the homologous chromosome monosomy trisomy you must have seen so this is not related with sickle cell anemia so it's a frame shift mutation is because of addition or deletion of one or, or more than one base basis which is going to uh, change the meaning which is going to shift my dear students. they're going to change the meaning of the codons from the point where the insertion or deletion is done so sickle cell anemia is an example of substitution in that also transversion so yeah these are pretty much these questions these are the all 50 questions from your botany i hope you enjoyed the session thank you very much for listening Hello everyone, welcome to Infinity Learn by Sri Chaitanya. My name is Vibhati and in today's session I will discuss grant test for 10 which is physics portion. Now the question number 1 is a bomber plane moves horizontally with a speed of 500 meter per second and a bomb is released from it. So when you release a bomb it will have 500 meter per second initial velocity along x axis and bomb will follow this path and it will fall to ground something like this. So this is nothing but the case of horizontal projectile <coughs> and it will fall to ground in 10 seconds. Angle at which it strikes the ground will be. So after 10 seconds its velocity along y axis will be g into t that is 10 into 10 that is equal to 100 meter per second. So bomb will strike the ground with 500 meter per second x velocity and 100 meter per second with y velocity. So over here if this is the angle at which it will strike the ground then this angle tan theta over here will be tan theta will be perpendicular divided by base or you can write it as vy divided by vx. So this will give you 1, point, 1 upon 5 and theta will be tan inverse 1 upon 5 which is option 1. Next is this one a body moves along a circular path of radius 10 meter. Radius is given as 10 meter and the coefficient of friction is 0.5. What should be its angular speed in radian per second if it is not to slip from the surface? So over here angular speed omega is under root mu g upon r. Okay. So this is under root mu is 0.5, g is 10 upon r over here is uh, again 10, okay, <clears throat> yeah. So this will cancel this and we have omega as under root 0.5 which is 1 upon 2. So correct answer is option 4 which is 0.7 radian per second. Next is a car is moving along a straight horizontal road with a speed if the coefficient of friction between the tire and the road is uh, mu then the shortest distance in which the car can be stopped is. So uh, stopping distance is u square upon 2a. Stopping distance is given as u square upon 2a. So u is v naught square 
u square is v naught square divided by 2. A is mu into g. That is retardation. So, correct answer for the stopping distance is v naught square upon 2 mu g. Next is for a particle in uniform anti-clockwise circular motion. So, this is let us say x axis, this is y axis and circular motion is anti-clockwise and this is certain point P r comma theta that means this distance is r and this angle is theta. The value of acceleration a vector at this particular point is. So, at this point it is performing uniform circular motion. It will be having only one acceleration that is centripetal acceleration which is towards the center and it is a. So, if this angle is theta then this angle is also theta. So, if you take the component of a it will be a cos theta along negative x axis and a sin theta along negative y axis. So, a is v square upon r. So, a vector will be v square minus v square upon r cos theta i cap and minus v square upon r sin theta j cap minus minus because one is along negative x axis and other one is along negative y axis. So, correct answer is option 4. Next is this one an engine pumps 100 kilogram of water through a height of 10 meter in 5 second given that the efficiency of the engine is 60 percent what is uh, what is the power of the engine. So, power into 60 percent is equal to mgh upon t m is 100 g is 10 h is 10 divided by t is 5. So, after solving this one you will get your power as 3.3 into 10 power 3 watt which is 3.3 kilowatt which is option 2. Next is this one if the earth were to suddenly contract to half of its present radius without any change in its mass the duration of the new day will be. So, earth is contracting on its own right half of its present radius. So, its angular momentum about its uh, axis of rotation will be same. So, you can conserve the momentum I1 omega 1 is equal to I2 omega 2. I1 is the moment of inertia with the before contraction. I2 is the moment of inertia after contraction. Omega 1 is the angular speed before contraction and omega 2 is the angular speed after contraction. So, over here omega is given as 2 pi upon t. So, I1 into 2 pi upon t1 is equal to I2 into 2 pi upon t2. 2 pi 2 pi cancel. So, you can write t2 as I2 upon I1 into T1. So, over here I2 is the moment of inertia after contraction. So, this is 2 by 5 m r by 2 ka whole square. This is solid sphere, right? So, solid sphere moment of inertia is 2 by 5 m r square. Radius is r by 2, half of its present value into T1. Time period before contraction of 1 day is 24 hours divided by I1 is the moment of inertia before contraction. So, this is 2 by 5 m r square. So, this will give you cancel, 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 cancel. So, this will give you 24 upon 4 that is equal to 6 hours. So, new time period is 6 hours which is option 3. Next is this one. A body at rest breaks into two pieces of equal masses. The parts will move. So, when body at rest breaks into two pieces of equal masses, their initial momentum is 0. So, uh, this two masses M and N will have same equal and opposite momentum so that their net final momentum should be 0, right? So, they should move with the same speed in the opposite direction. So, correct answer is option 3. Next is a force F vector is phi I cap plus 3 J cap plus 2 K cap Newton is applied over a particle which displaces its uh, it from variation to the point 2 i cap minus j cap meter the work done on the particle in joule is. So, work done is f dot r. So, f dot r will give you work done which is phi into 2 10 and 3 into minus 1 that is minus 3 that is 7 joules. So, correct answer is option 2. Next is this one a train is moving at 30 meter per second in still air the frequency of the locomotive whistle is uh, 500 hertz and the speed of the sound is 345 meter per second. 
the apparent wavelength of sound in front of and behind the train are respectively. So, when we are calculating apparent frequency in front that means this is observer and train is approaching the observer. So, apparent frequency in this case will be what? Apparent frequency in this case will be f into v, uh, v uh, velocity of observer is 0 right. So, it is 0 divided by v minus v s where, where v s is the velocity of sound which is uh, uh, source which is 30 meter per second. So, this will give you 500 into V is 345 divided by 345 minus 30 that is 315. So, this is F dash. F dash is lambda uh, frequency is the lambda uh, sorry velocity upon lambda. Lambda into frequency is velocity. So, over here lambda will be velocity upon F dash. So, lambda dash wavelength of the sound over here heard by the observer in front of the train will be let us say lambda dash which is 345 divided by this frequency which is 500 into 345 into 315. So, this will give you correct answer as 0.63 meter. Now, when the uh, observer is behind the train here, so train is separating, train is moving away from the observer. So, in that case, apparent frequency will be f into v upon v plus v s. So, this will give you 500 into 345 divided by 345 plus 30 which is 375. Now, lambda will be uh, velocity upon frequency. So, it is 345 divided by 500 into 345 divided by 375. So, this will give you correct wavelength as 0.75 meter. So, correct answer is option 4 which is uh, 0.63 meter comma 0.75 meter. <coughs> Next is when a biconvex lens of glass having refractive index 1.5 is dipped in liquid, it act, acts like a plain glass lap. This implies that liquid has refractive index. So, when uh, any lens is uh, behaving like a plain glass lab in a liquid, that means refractive index of the liquid as well as refractive index of the lens is equal. So, correct answer will be option 4. Next is this one, the final image formed in a compound microscope is. So, final image is magnified, it is inverted and it is... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, virtual. It is inverted with respect to the original object, but it is virtual in nature. Next is this one. In the shown arrangement of a meter bridge, if AC corresponding to null deflection of a galvanometer is x, okay, this AC length is given as x. What would be its value if the radius of the wire AB is doubled? So, we know that R1 upon R2 is x upon 100 minus x. Now, over here, R1 upon R2, it does not, x over here, it does not depend on the radius of the wire AB, right? So, uh, if you are not changing R1 upon R2, null point will not change. So, correct answer is option 1 only, not 3, option 1. Next is this one, an electron positron pair is produced by a gamma ray uh, photon of energy 2.26 mega electron volt. So, gamma ray photon has energy of 2.26 mega electron volt. Out of this 2.26 mega electron volt, 1.02 mega electron volt is utilized in creating the pair of electron and positron, right? So, this is the remaining energy. So, we are left with 1.24 mega electron volt only. We are left with 1.24 mega electron volt only. So, this 1.24 mega electron volt will be divided equally between electron and positron. So, energy imparted over here is 1.24 divided by 2 that is 0.62 mega electron volt. Okay. So, yeah total pair will get 1.24 mega electron volt and each will get 0.62 mega electron volt. Next is the half life for radioactive substance is 20 minutes. The time taken between 50 percent decay and 87.5 percent decay of the substance will be. So, this is 100 percent of the material. After 20 minutes, we are left with 50 percent of the material. After 20 minutes, we are left with 25 percent of the material. And after 20 minutes, we are left with 12.5 percent of the 
material. That means at this point 87.5% of the substance is decayed and at this point 50% of the substance is decayed, right. So time gap between 50% decay and 87.5% decay is 20 plus 20 that is 40 minutes which is option 1. Next is this one, the input signal given to common emitter amplifier having a voltage gain of 150 is given as 2 cos 50 T plus uh, pi by 3, the corresponding output signal will be. So uh, output signal will be, out uh, will have a phase difference of pi, so over here the phase will be 15 T plus pi by 3 plus pi, so it is 15 T plus 4 pi by 3, so correct answer is option 3. Next is this one, in Bohr model of hydrogen atom, the force on the electron depends on the principal quantum number S. So force is mv square upon r and uh, if you look at the velocity, velocity is inversely proportional to n, so velocity square is inversely proportional to n square and if you look at the value of r, r is directly proportional to n square, so v square upon r is directly proportional to 1 upon n square into n square which is 1 upon n to the power 4 and force is directly proportional to v square upon r, so force is directly proportional to 1 upon n to the power 4 which is option 2. Next is this one, the de Broglie wavelength of a neutron at uh, 27 degree Celsius is lambda, what will be its wavelength at 927 degree Celsius, okay. So initial temperature is 27 plus 273 that is uh, 300 Kelvin and final temperature is 927 plus 273 that is 1200 Kelvin. So we are increasing the temperature to 4 times. Now, de Broglie wavelength for a thermal neutron is inversely proportional to square root of its temperature. So, if you are increasing the temperature to 4 times, lambda will, in, lambda will change up, uh, by 1 upon under root 4 times, that will be 1 upon 2 times. So, new wavelength will be lambda by 2 which is option 1. Next is this one, <coughs> two spheres of masses M and capital M are situated in air and the gravitational force between them is F. The space around the masses is now filled with a liquid of specific gravity 3, the gravitational force will now be. So gravitational force is independent of the material medium between the masses, so it will be same which is option 3. Next is, in a parallel plate capacitor, the distance between the plates is d, potential difference is v, the energy stored per unit volume. So it is half epsilon naught into e square, e is v upon d, so it will be half epsilon naught v upon d ka whole square, so it is half epsilon naught v square upon d square which is option 2. Next is this one, a coil of inductive reactants uh, 31 ohm has a resistance of 8 ohm and uh, capacitive reactance is 25 ohm. The combination is connected to an AC source of 110 volt, the power factor. So power factor is cos phi which is R upon Z. So R is 8, Z is under root of R square plus XL minus XC square which is 31 minus 25 ka square which is 6 square. So this will be 8 upon 10 which is 0.8. So correct answer is option 3. Next is this one, a hollow cylinder has a charge Q at its center, if phi is the electric flux associated with the curved surface B, the flux linked with the plane surface A will be. So uh, total flux is Q upon epsilon naught, flux through A and C will be same, let us say it is phi 1 and phi 1 and uh, flux through curved surface is phi, so we have total flux phi 1 plus phi 1 plus phi is equal to Q upon epsilon naught. So 2 phi 1 plus phi is equal to Q upon epsilon naught. So phi 1 will be Q upon epsilon naught minus phi to the power, uh, 1 by 2 times Q upon epsilon naught minus phi. So it is option 1. Next is this one, the dimension of uh, induced EMF is. So dimension of induced EMF is L di by dt, induced EMF is given by L di by dt. Dimension of L is M. L square T minus 2, A to the power minus 2 and di is, uh, current is uh, ampere upon time, right, uh, di by dt is, uh, okay, 
ampere A is the current and T is for time, ampere upon time. So, this will give you m L square T minus 3 into A power minus 1. So, uh, you can write it as m L square, we, we need to find it in MKS system, right. So, this is m L square T minus 2 upon A into T. A into T will give you Q charge. So, this will be m L square T minus 2 divided by Q. So, this is m L square T minus 2 Q inverse which is option 4. Next is this one, two satellites of earth S1 and S2 are moving in the same orbit. Orbit is same, that means orbital radius is same. The mass of S1 is four times the mass of S2. Which of the following statement is true? So orbital velocity is under root gm upon r. It does not depend on the mass of the satellite. It depends on the mass of the planet and orbital radius. Both of the satellites are having same orbital radius. That is why their orbital speed will be same. Okay. So, uh, same orbital speed. Correct answer is option 3. Next is, suppose ideal gas equation follows Vp cube is equal to constant K. Initial temperature and volume of the gas are T and V respectively. If the gas expands to 27 times its volume, then temperature will become. So, we know that uh, over here P is K p cube is k upon v. So, p will be k upon v to the power 1 by 3. Okay. Now, we know that p v is equals to n r t. So, p is k to the power 1 by 3, v to the power 1 by 3 into v is equal to n r t. Now, this, this are constant. So, you can write v to the power 1, 2 by 3 is directly proportional to temperature. That means v 1 upon v 2 to the power 2 by 3 is equal to T1 upon T2, right? V1 is V, V2 is uh, 27 V. So, V1 upon V2 is 1 upon 27 to the power 2 by 3 and that is equal to T1 upon T2. So, over here you will get this one as 1 upon 9 as T upon T2. So, T2 is 90 which is option 2. Next is this one, a conducting circular loop is placed in a uniform magnetic field 0.025 Tesla when it is plane perpendicular to the loop. Okay. Radius of the loop is made to shrink at a constant rate 1 millimeter per second which is 10 power minus 3 meter per second. The induced EMF when the radius is 2 centimeter. So, what is the induced EMF when the radius is 2 centimeter? So, induced EMF will be in this case it is uh, dB by dt. So, it is D into uh, <coughs> D phi by dt, sorry, into BA upon dt. You can take B common. So, it is DA by dt which is pi r square, differentiation of pi r square with t. So, this is B into 2 pi r into dr by dt. This is the magnitude of the induced EMF over here. So, it is uh, 0 0.025 into 2 pi into r is uh, 2 centimeter which is 2 by 100 into dr by dt is 10 power minus 3. So, after solving this one you will get induced EMF as pi micro volt. Next is electric potential at a point x, y, z is given by okay, minus x square y minus x z cube plus 4 electric field is. So, del v upon del x is given as uh, differentiation of this complete term with respect to x. So, it is minus 2 x y minus uh, z cube del v upon del y that is differentiation of partial differentiation of this uh, expression with respect to y is minus x square and del v upon del z is partial differentiation of this term with respect to z. So, this is minus x into 3 z square. Okay. So, electric field is minus of del v upon del x i cap plus del v upon del y j cap plus del v upon del z k cap. So, this is minus of minus 2 x y minus z q i cap minus minus plus uh, x square j cap and minus minus plus 3 x z square k cap, right. So, correct answer is option 1. Next is a particle of mass m charge q and kinetic energy t enters a transverse uniform magnetic field of induction b after 3 seconds. The kinetic energy of the particle will be. Kinetic energy of the particle is not changed by the force of the magnetic field. 
right. So, it will be same which is option 3. Next is this one the acceleration due to gravity on the planet is 9 meter the 9 times the acceleration due to gravity on planet B. A man jumps to a height of 2 meter on the surface of A. What is the height of the jump by the same person on the planet? So, height is V square upon 2G, right? So, basically V square is same, V square upon 2 is same. So, V square is GH. So, GH product, let us compare GH product for both the planets. So, G1 H1 will be G2 H2. G1 is uh, 9 times the acceleration due to gravity on planet B. So, it is 8G into H1 is 2. G2 is let us say G. Sorry, it is 9G. And H2 is uh, I do not know. So, GG cancel. So, over here H2 is 18 meter. So, correct answer is option 1. Next is this one. A wire of uniform cross section having poison ratio as 0.5 then percentage change in its volume is what is the percentage change in its volume so delta v upon v fractional change in its volume is given as 1 minus 2 sigma delta l upon l where sigma is the poisons ratio over here right so poisons ratio is 0.5 so it is 1 minus 2 into 0.5 into delta l upon l and this is nothing but 0 right so percentage change in the volume is 0 percent which is option 3 next is the rms current in an uh, AC circuit is 2 ampere, the wattless current V root 3 ampere. What is the power factor? Okay, we need to find power factor. So, wattless current is given as I RMS into sin phi, right? Wattless current is uh, <coughs> root 3, RMS is 2 into sin phi. So, sin phi is root 3 upon 2 and it is root 3 upon 2 when phi is 60 degree. Power factor is cos phi. So, it is cos 60 degree which is 1 by 2. Option number 3. Next is the material of fuse wire should have, it should have low specific resistance and low melting point. So, correct answer is option 2. Next is two soap bubbles are in air. Pressure inside the two soap bubbles are 1.01 times atmospheric pressure and 1.02 times atmospheric pressure. Uh, ratio between their volumes is. So, we need to find ratio. So, excess pressure in this soap bubble is 1.01 p minus p that is 0.01 p. Excess pressure in this bubble is 1.02 p minus p is 0.02 p, right. So, uh, we need to find the ratio, right. So, V1 upon V2 is given as delta P2 upon delta P1 cube, right. So, this will be uh, 0.02 p divided by 0.01 p ka whole cube p p cancel this is cancel so we have 2 ka cube that is equal to 8 so ratio is 8 is to 1 which is option 3 next is this one if the circuit shown the ratio of the readings of the ammeter when the switch s is open and when switch s is closed is so when switch s is open this will be the effective circuit 20 volt 3 ohm 2 ohm. So, current I 1 will be 20 upon effective resistance 3 plus 5, uh, 3 plus 2 5. So, it is 4 ampere. When sw switch S is closed, effective resistance will change because we are adding 2 ohm with 2 ohm in parallel. Okay. So, this 2 and 2 parallel will give you 1 ohm. This 3 ohm plus 1 ohm are in series. So, their effective will be 4 ohm and current will change to I2 and that is 20 upon 4 that is 5 ampere. So, reading of ammeter will be 4 and after that it will be 5. So, ratio is 4 upon 5 which is option 2. Next is this one. At a certain place the horizontal components of earth's magnetic field is root 3 times its vertical component. Angle of dip. So, angle of dip tan theta is given as BV upon BH and that is equal to 1 upon root 3. So, tan theta is 1 upon root 3 when the angle is 30 degrees. So, correct answer is 1. Next is this one. Two infinitely long thin straight wires having uniform linear charge densities lambda and 2 lambda are arranged parallel to each other at uh, R distance apart. So, this will be R by 2 and this will be R by 2. We need to find total electric field at this midpoint. 
So due to this lambda, electric field will be away from it. Let's say it is E1 and that is equal to 2k lambda upon r by 2 that is 4k lambda upon r. Due to this 2 lambda, electric field will be away from it and that is let's say it is E2 and it is 2k 2 lambda upon r by 2 which is equal to 8k lambda upon r. So net electric field will be e, E2 minus E1 because both are opposite, right? So this will be 8k lambda upon r minus 4k lambda upon r which is 4k lambda upon r. k is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught so it is 4 into 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught lambda upon r 4 4 cancel so correct answer is lambda upon pi epsilon naught r which is option 2. Next is this one a particle moves according to the law a is equals to minus ky find the velocity as a function of distance y where v naught is the initial velocity and a is the acceleration. So a is v dv by dy and it is equal to minus ky. So v dv will be minus ky dy integrate these two expressions from v0 to v and from 0 to y right so you will get v dy as v square uh, sorry v dv as v square by 2 from v0 to v and that is equal to minus k y square by 2 from 0 to y right so this will be v square minus v0 square by 2 is equal to minus k y square by 2. 2 to cancel so v square is v naught square minus k y square and correct answer is option 1. Next is what is the unit vector perpendicular to the following vector. So uh, the cross product will be perpendicular to this 2 right so let's find cross product first i j k positive negative positive 2 2 minus 1 6 minus 3 2 so this will be i this is 4 minus 3 minus j uh, this will be 4 plus 6 and this is k this is minus 5 minus 12 so it is i cap minus 10 j cap minus 17 k cap and the unit vector will be i cap minus 10 j cap minus 17 k cap divided by under root of magnitude of this divided by magnitude of this which is under root of 1 square plus minus 10 square plus minus 17 square. So this will give you correct answer as option 3. Next is a small object of uniform density roll up a curved surface with an initial velocity v. It reaches up to a maximum height of 3v square upon 4g. What with respect to the initial position the object is what is the object. So we know that v square is equals to 2gh divided by 1 plus k square upon r square. Okay. So h is 3v square upon 4g. So v square is equals to 2g into 3v square upon 4g divided by 1 plus k square upon r square. So this will give you uh, 1 plus k square upon r square as 3 by 2. So this will give you 1 k square upon r square is 3 by 2 minus 1 which is 1 by 2 and k square is r square by 2 and k is r upon root 2. So radius of gyration is r upon root 2 for disc right so correct answer is option 4. Next is this one uh, the length of the wire between the two ends of a sonometer is 100 centimeter what should be the position of two bridges below the wire so that the three segments of the wire have their fundamental frequencies in the ratio 1 is to 3 is to 5. So over here frequencies mu1 is to mu2 is to mu3 should be 1 is to 3 is to 5 and frequency is inversely proportional to length right. So 1 upon uh, basically L1 is to L2 is to L3 should be 1 upon 1 is to 1 upon 3 is to 1 upon 5 so this is nothing but 15 is to 5 is to 3. So uh, summation of this ratio will be 23 right. So L1 is 15 upon 23 times 100. So this is 1500 divided by 23 centimeter. L2 is uh, 5 into 100 divided by 23. That is 500 divided by 23 centimeter. And L3 is uh, 300 divided by 23 centimeter. So correct answer is, uh, <coughs> yeah, this will be the remaining one. Yeah, okay. Next is figure shows mixture of blue, green, red colors incident normally on a 
right angled prism critical angles for blue i think it should have yeah it should have one answer and third length will be uh, 300 divided by 23 centimeter yeah next is figure shows mixture of blue green red colors incident normally on a right angle prism critical angles for blue green red colors are 43 44 and 46 degree respectively the arrangement will separate okay which color will be separated from this arrangement so these are uh, incinerating normally on this surface so they will go straight like this if this is 45 degree this is 45 degree this is normal this is 45 degree so angle of incidence on this surface is 45 degree angle of incidence is 45 degree if angle of incidence is greater than critical angle tir will happen so for blue and green angle of incidence is greater than critical angle so blue and green will perform tir and red color will not be able to perform tir so it will come out of this surface like this so you can separate red from green and blue so correct answer is option one next is this one when a ydc is carried on liquid fifth bright fringe lies at a point on the screen where third dark fringe lying in air the refractive index of the medium is so let's say um, in a wavelength is lambda naught in medium it is lambda so fifth bright fringe will be phi lambda d upon d and it is equal to the location of third dark fringe in a so it is 3 into 2 minus 1 2 n minus 1 into lambda naught d upon 2 d so this will give you d d cancel so we have uh, phi lambda is equal to phi lambda naught divided by 2 so lambda naught divided by lambda will be 2 so correct answer is option 3 and lambda naught uh, divided by lambda is basically refractive index that is why correct answer is 2 uh, which is option 3 next is this one assuming the diodes to be silicon with forward bias uh, zero resistance the current i in the following circuit is okay positive so this is forward bias this is reverse bias so it will have this is forward bias diode zero resistance this is 2 kilo ohm and this will be 20 volt okay this will be 20 volt so basically current will be v upon r equivalent so v over here is 20 volt minus potential barrier of silicon diode over here so potential barrier of silicon diode is 0.7 volt so this will be 20 minus 0.7 divided by 2000 ohm so correct answer in current will be 6.9.65 milliampere next is if in the rutherford experiment the number of particles scattered at 90 degree are 27 per minute so n is inversely proportional to 1 upon sine to the power 4 theta by 2 so you can write n1 upon n2 is sine power 4 theta 2 by 2 and divided by sine power 4 theta 1 by 2 you can use this expression so n2 will be n1 into sine theta 1 by 2 divided by sine theta 2 by 2 to the power 4 okay n1 is 27 per minute sin theta 1 by 2 matlab sin 45 degree uh, which is 1 upon root 2 divided by sin theta 2 by 2 which is sin 60 by 2 which is sin 30 degree which is 1 by 2, 2 to the power 4 so we are left with 27 into root 2 to the power 4 and this will give you correct answer as 108 per minute which is option 3 next is this one a cylindrical rod having temperature t1 and t2 at its end the rate of flow of heat is q1 calorie per second which is ka delta theta upon l if all the linear dimensions are doubled that means we are doubling the radius over here so area of cross section will be four times and length will be two times l then rate of flow of heat q2 will be so q2 will be k into 4a into Th delta theta divided by 2l so this is 2 times ka delta theta divided by l and it is nothing but q1 so q2 will be 2 times q1 which is option 2 next is this one forces are applied on a wheel of radius 20 centimeter as shown in the figure the torque produced by the force is 4 newton at a okay so this 4 newton will produce 
will rotate this body in anti uh, clockwise sense right so its torque will be 4 into 0.2 this r and this is 90 degree in clockwise sense this 8 newton will uh, try to rotate this body in anti clockwise sense so this is anti clockwise Hmm. and this is clockwise so it is 8 into sin 30 degree 1 by 2 into 0 0.2 in clockwise sense this will produce zero torque because x is uh, force is passing through the point at which we want to find the torque and this will produce one clockwise torque of uh, 9 into 9 into 0 0.2 so this is 1.8 newton so see this anti clockwise and clockwise torque will cancel each other so remaining torque is 1.8 newton and this is in clockwise sense so correct answer is option sorry 2 next is this one candle is the unit of it is the unit of luminous intensity next is a wire in the form of circular loop of wanton carrying a current produces a magnetic field b at the center if the same wire is looped into a coil of two turns and carries the same current the new value of magnetic field induction at the center so it is n square times b right so n is the number of turns which is 2 so it is 2 square times b which is equal to 4 b so correct answer is option 4 next is this one a pendulum has time period of t in a and when it is made to oscillate in what it uh, acquired a time period t dash which is root 2 times t the density of the material pendulum bob is so over here t upon t dash is nothing but g dash upon g where g in the material medium is g into 1 minus uh, rho upon sigma divided by g right and t dash is root 2 t so it is t upon root 2 t is equal to under root of 1 minus rho upon sigma okay so let's square it so it is 1 upon 2 times 1 minus rho upon uh, sigma okay so in this case you'll get rho upon sigma as 1 by 2 right so sigma will be 2 rho where rho is the density of the water which is equal to 1 so sigma will be 2 gram per cc which is option 2 next is this one the pressure at the bottom of tank of water is 3 p where p is the atmospheric pressure if the water is drawn out till the level of the water is lowered by one fifth the pressure at the bottom of the tank will be now so over here pressure uh, difference 3p minus p that is 2p is equal to rho g h so h will be 2p upon rho g now we are lowering the level of the water by 1 by 5 so remaining level is 4 by 5 h so now new uh, pressure difference delta p will be rho g h dash which is rho g into h dash is uh, 4 by 5 h h is 2p upon rho g so this is rho g into 4 by 5 into 2p upon rho g so this is 8p upon 5 so this is pressure difference so it is p2 minus atmospheric pressure is equal to 8p upon 5 so p2 is p plus 8p upon 5 that is equal to 13p upon 5 which is option 2 next is this one at a certain temperature the rms velocity of o2 is 400 meter per second at the same temperature the rms velocity of h2 will be so v rms is inversely proportional to under root m so uh, v rms for h2 divided by v rms of o2 is equal to under root of m of o2 divided by m of h2 which is equal to 32 divided by 2 that is equal to under root of 16 that is equal to 4 so v h2 will be 4 times v o2 so this is 4 into 400 that is equal to 1600 meter per second which is option 3 hi everyone welcome to infinity learn by shri chatanya my name is palak in today's video i'll be discussing about the questions of chemistry grant test so let's begin first question so what is the first question the gas which is leaked from storage tank of union carbide plant in bhopal gas strategy so this was a very common incident which took place 
in 90s right so you know many people died because of the release of a chemical and the you know common tragedy which came into picture was bhopal gas tragedy so what was the gas which was released it was methyl isocyanate what is the formula ch3ncs so this is methyl isocyanate which actually uh, which was leaked and which killed many many people so i know you might be familiar with this so what is the answer first decomposition of ozone is exothermic reaction so we are talking about decomposition of ozone now what ozone gives on decomposition so let us write the reaction o3 it gives o2 let me balance this so it will be 2o3 gives 3o2 so on decomposition ozone gives oxygen gas and they're saying that the reaction is exothermic which means that the value of delta h is negative here now here what is this can i calculate the value of delta s from here yes i can find you can see that the number of moles in product are 3 and in reactant it is 2 so what it will be 3 minus 2 it will be 1 again this is what positive so for this reaction delta s is positive and delta h is negative why because it is an exothermic reaction now let's see the options the reaction will be spontaneous at low temperature or at high temperature so how can we identify spontaneity of a reaction very simple g so i'll write the formula g is delta h minus t delta s now what is this gives free energy change so for a spontaneous reaction we want this to be negative in this condition what is delta h it is negative and this is positive so if this is negative and this is positive so this entire term will be what negative because we have a negative sign here negative minus negative or negative plus negative what it will be it will be negative only so my reaction will be spontaneous at all the temperature there is no need to check whether the temperature is low or high so delta g is a very very important concept you should remember when the value of delta g is negative our reaction is spontaneous when it is zero reaction will be at equilibrium when it is positive then the reaction will be non spontaneous okay very very Uh, easy question next ch3 ch2 cl what is this ethyl chloride on reaction with alcoholic koh remember there are two types of reaction of uh, uh, alkyl halide what are these one with aqueous koh another with alcoholic koh so always remember when we are doing the reaction in the presence of alcoholic koh we are not getting what we are not getting alcohol so if here this is alcoholic koh so alcohol nahi milne wala hai theek hai to kya milega the other reaction is alkene so ch3 ch2 cl on reaction with alcoholic koh what will be the product product will be the eliminated product and it will be alkene right by the elimination of hcl similarly uh, there is an additional concept if the reaction takes place in the presence of aqueous koh what is the product it will be ch3 ch2 oh so whenever i am taking alcoholic koh i am not getting alcohol i am getting alkene remember here we have substitution reaction in case of aqueous koh here we have the elimination product so what is the answer this here we are talking about alcoholic koh so it will be a now next i am uh, reacting it with bromine and ccl4 so what will happen addition will take place so ch2 ch2 and here now what will happen in case of zinc and alcohol followed by heat these are reducing agents i would say so again elimination will take place so again i'll be getting this so what is the correct answer my correct answer is option number 2 that is ethylene this is ethene or ethylene so what is the correct answer it is option number 2 the ph of an aqueous hcl solution 
if it is diluted 100 times then it's then it's resulting pH becomes so now what is this pH you know we are given a salt KCl generally what are we doing we from the pH we can calculate the concentration of H plus ion and then when we are doing dilution so we will dilute it and the pH should come to be 9 but no many of you have done this mistake I am sure or you know are may do in future right but those students who are very smart after you have to learn from your mistakes after doing mistakes suppose if you have done wrong question in your grant test today you don't have to repeat this on the 17th remember such type of question comes check one thing what this is a salt it is a salt of strong acid and strong base remember it is a salt of strong acid HCl and strong base KOH so salt of strong acids and strong base are neutral so they will always have the pH of 7 so this was a conceptual question you, we, there was no need of any calculations and all it was just a conceptual question it is a salt of strong acid and strong base so it will be a neutral salt and what will be the pH of that neutral salt it will always be 7 so what is the correct answer option number third next total volume of number of atoms in a FCC cubic unit cell so a very very easy question from solid state generally you know uh, such type of questions are coming uh, from solid state it is expected that you get a tougher question but this is a very easy question we just need to uh, write the volume so volume for one sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube right now in FCC what is the value of z what is the number of atoms 4 so what will be the new volume it will be 4 into 4 by 3 pi r cube that is 16 by 3 pi r cube so what is my correct answer correct answer is option number 4 very very easy question from solid state right so I hope all of you have done this correct next uh, okay so we are given a potassium salt and we need to do electrolysis so in electrolysis what we will be getting in electrolysis now after electrolysis what I will be getting CH3 CO K is there and followed by elimination I will get B I need to identify C electrolysis will give me what again an alkane after heating I will be getting the product which will be decarboxylated so what will be B for me B will be CH3 CH3 why because we in the reaction we have two carbons after electrolysis followed by heating what will be the product we will be getting alkane with double number of carbon atoms but you can say this in electrolysis dimerization is taking place but after the removal of the CO hai na? Do carbon may say carbon to chala jayega phir wo dousre molecule se combine karega so final product B will be this and plus saath mein will be getting two CO2 molecules now when we react it with alkaline KMnO4 so in the presence of cold alkaline KMnO4 what is happening what is happening here alkaline KMnO4 H will go and I will be getting CH2 this H will be replaced by OH right so this will be the final answer uh, we need to identify C what is C C is CH2OH and CH2OH clear next question the basic character of the transition metal monoxides follow this order now we know that basic character is directly proportional to the size of the ion if size is more basic strength or basic character will be more right so we have these elements and ion is same so we'll uh, see the size for the cations now I have titanium vanadium chromium and iron so what is the order of the size they are present in 3d transition series 
so titanium is the largest size followed by vanadium then chromium then iron so what will be the correct option correct option will be tio vo cro and feo right so this will be the basic character of the oxides remember this important point i think this type of question all already you got in previous test also so it's just a repetition okay very easy question remember this thing that you know basic character is directly proportional to size next the crystal field splitting energy of octahedral complex and tetrahedral complex is related as so there is a relation between the CFSE value for the octahedral complex and tetrahedral complex what is the relation it is this one that CFSE of tetrahedral complex is equal to 4 by 9 of CFSE of the octahedral complex always remember the CFSE value of octahedral is greater than the CFSE value of tetrahedral complexes clear so the op answer is option number 2 which of the following produce a racemic mixture on monobromination now we will be talking about an alkane after of which we are doing monobromination and after bromination i am i'll be getting a racemic mixtures racemic mixtures means equal amount of both the isomers right dln equal amount will form the racemic mixtures so for that i need a chiral carbon right so i'll just draw the structure first so what is the alkene here uh, so alkane here this is ch3 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 right next what is this compound CH3 then to this carbon to uh, I am talk, uh, talking about this carbon so it is this carbon 1 methyl group 2 methyl group 3 methyl group and 4 methyl groups right first you have to draw like this because otherwise you will be confused which is the structure how to draw this so coming to the next complex so i'm talking about first this carbon this carbon i have three methyl group this carbon one two three so this will be ch2 and ch3 this is a simple compound so monobromination i'll have to do so when i do the monobromination of this compound what will be the product it will be ch2 br so it does not contain any chiral carbon so this cannot be our answer next see you can see uh, when i do monobromination here at this place i am going to get a chiral carbon right so let's see i'll just erase this and so this will be br and this will be h so this is a chiral carbon yes or no yes this is a chiral carbon so when i am going to take its mirror image it will give me what racemic mixtures this it will be different no mirror image will be different here so this will give me racemic mixtures now if i talk about this it will be ch2 br ch2 br or here or here it will be ch2 br only so it will not there will not be any chiral carbon if chiral carbon is not there they will not form racemic mixtures here if i do the monobromination here what will happen will this be a chiral carbon no no chiral carbon so we will not get any racemic mixture on monobromination because for that we need chiral carbon when i'll take the mirror image what will happen this they will form non superimposable mirror images and they will give me racemic mixture so what is the correct answer ma'am the correct answer is option number third so well done i think all of you have understood this very easy question but remember please draw these structures carefully if you are missing any carbon or adding any additional carbon then you will face the problem okay next the pollutants which directly come from the air you know they are primary pollutants yes and the primary pollutants are now converted to secondary pollutants which of the following is a secondary pollutant so co we are directly getting hydrocarbon directly getting peroxy acetyl nitrate no it is not it is formed by you know by the reaction of primary pollutants so this is, has to be the answer answer is option number third 
IUPAC name. Oh, so this IUPAC name, COH has uh, is given the highest priority. Yes, COH is given the highest priority at any time. So I'll start numbering one. I think it's not visible to you. So I'll draw it again. So one, two, three, and four. So it will be the parent chain will contain four carbons. So propanoic will not be the answer. Pant will not be the answer because here we have five carbon. Here we have three carbons. Now it can be but one enoic acid or but three enoic acid. COH is given more priority than double bond. So it will be what? At the third position, I have this double bond, so it will be but two in oic acid. Answer number, answer is third. Which of the following is Z isomer among the following? Now, what are E and Z? These are you know different configurations. Z in Z isomer, I have the groups of high priority on the same side of the double bond, and in E, the groups of higher priority are on the different size of the double bond or we can say our opposite side of the double bond. So let us give the priority. Priority is same. How are we deciding the priority on the basis of their atomic number? So let me uh, know start and give mark to all you know all the options. First chlorine or carbon. So I know chlorine or carbon which will be given more priority. Chlorine. So this will be one, this will be two. Here this will be 1, this will be 2. So you can see opposite, the groups of higher priority are on the opposite side, to it, so it will be E. Next, this will be 1, this will be 2. Here CH2OH, CHO. Now I can write CHO as CH, O and O. Here I will write CH2 as C, H, O and O. So it will, which will be given more priority, which will be given more priority, which will be given more hydrogen So this will be 1 and this will be 2. So again opposite side pe aage, it will also be E. Next 1, 2 and 1, 2. So you can see 1, 1 opposite nahi hai, 2, 2 opposite nahi hai, same side pe hai. So this will be my answer. My answer will be option number 3rd. Next. Uh, yeah, option number third. Which of the following is optically active? So, which of the following compounds are optically active? For this, we need a chiral carbon. So, what I will do, I will just draw the structures of all the compound and I will check which of these have a chiral carbon. If they have a chiral carbon, they will be optically active. So, n-propanol, this is n-propanol. Do we have a chiral carbon here? No, wrong. 2 chlorobutane, 2 so this is 2 chlorobutane, on this carbon I have different groups, ethyl group, methyl group, hydrogen and chlorine, this will be the chiral carbon, so my answer will be 2 chlorobutane. N-butanol also, there will not be any chiral carbon, 3 hydroxypentane, no, because it will be on the third carbon, we have same groups. Ethyl and ethyl. So it will not have chiral carbon. Answer is option number 2. In, in Lassinase test, which of the following organic compounds which produce a blood red color when the sodium extract is treated with FeCl3? So in the past uh, previous test also, I discussed about the color of different solutions. Uh, we talked about sodium nitroprusside and you know uh, Fe complex or FeCN6. Next, I also talked to you about the blood red coloration. So, blood red coloration is due to the formation of FeSCN complex. You know, there is a complex of FeSCN. So, this gives the blood red coloration. Now, this test is given by the compounds which contain sulfur and which contains the nitrogen atom. So, this is a complex which has some formula, but you need to remember that when we are reacting with iron, iron with sulfur and nitrogen compound. So, whenever our compound contains sulfur and nitrogen, 
on reaction with lysinase test we are getting blood red coloration okay so actually uh, this is FeCN there has to be a uh, you know Fe3 plus it combines with SCN minus so it will be Fe SCN whole twice some somewhat this is the formula of the complex so this has blood red color okay this complex is blood red color now so we need to search for a reactant which contains both nitrogen as well as sulfur it contains only nitrogen so here what will be the test sodium nitroprusside test only sulfur uh, the other test yeah here sodium nitroprusside test sodium nitroprusside and here we have this uh, you know we FeCN6 complex ban jayega aisa kuch so they will not react what will be our answer our answer will be this compound because it contains nitrogen as well as sulfur CaCO2 water uh, gives A red hot tube gives B and this on reaction with AlCl3 and CH3Cl give C. What is the sequence B and C? So CaCO2 plus water, it will give me what? Remember, this is a reaction on water, on the reaction of water, it will give ethylene. Acetylene, I would say, acetylene. Acetylene will react with red hot tube. it will give me what benzene this will be benzene now it will again react with AlCl3 electrophilic substitution reaction will take place and chlorination and you know chlorination will not take place this is the alkylation right alkylation electrophilic substitution reaction and we will be getting this compound now what is this this is a this is b and this is c we need to find the value of b and c what is b and c in the sequence b will be benzene and this will be toluene so what is the correct answer option number third clear uh, select the incorrect statement out of the following related to synthetic rubber so we are talking about synthetic rubber Synthetic rubber is a vulcanizable polymer, yes, we can vulcanize, you know, uh, synthetic rubber, this is correct. Is it is capable of being stretched, yes, we can stretch this rubber, we can stretch, we can compress, we can do, this is a basic, you know, basic parameter of rubber, this is also correct. All synthetic rubbers always contain ethane or its derivative, no, they actually contain isoprene units or we can say 1,3-butadiene, so buta-1,3-diene. So this will be 1,3-diene, check the number of hydrogen, 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah. So this will, this is what, buta-1,3-diene, this is the basic unit of, uh, you know, synthetic rubber, buna-N, buna-S, all these contains buta-1,3-diene. So this is the incorrect statement, our answer is what all synthetic rubbers always contain ethane, no this, this is the wrong answer. Buna N contains acrylonitrile and buta 13 diene this is correct and it is an example of synthetic rubber. Next question, exhaustive permutate can be regenerated by adding 10% uh, CaCl2. So what is the formula for permutate, it is Na2. Al2 Si2O8 dot XH2. This is what permuted. Now this permuted will react with any cation M2 plus and the sodium will be replaced. We will be getting M Al2 Si2O8 dot XH2O. Now I need to regenerate this. This is what? This is exhausted permutant. This is exhausted permutant. 
Now I need to regenerate this. I need to regenerate what? This. So what I will add? I need instead of M, I want a, NA. So why will I add CaCl2? No, I will not add that. I will add again 10% NaCl. So if I add again, so I will again get this compound and it will be what? Regenerated. So what is the correct statement? This is not the correct statement. So my statement 1 is incorrect. Right? My statement was is incorrect. Now let us talk about the statement 2. Calgon forms soluble complex with cations which are causing hardness to water. No. Is this correct or not? Calgon forms soluble complexes with cations which are causing hardness to water. So this is a correct statement. So what is the correct option? Correct option will be this. Yeah, statement 1 is incorrect and statement 2 is correct. KSP of sparingly soluble salt MOH whole twice is this. So we are given the value of KSP for this salt. Molar solubility of MOH twice in 0.1 molar KOH will be. So let's see. We have KOH, it is a strong electrolyte, so it will give me K plus and OH minus ions. So if we have taken 0.1 molar, so it will give 0.1 molar of potassium and 0.1 molar of o hydroxide ions. Again I am talking about another salt which also contains OH uh, hydroxide ions. It will give M2 plus plus 2 OH minus ions. So suppose let's say you know it has the solubility S or concentration S, this will give me S and 2S. Now what will be the concentration of OH minus ions? It will be S, no, 2S plus 0.1, right? The value of S, you can see that you know KSP is very less and KSP we are actually getting from S only, na? S se to aata hai. Jab hum multiply karenge, value kitna kam aara hai, to hum 0.1 se ye jo solubility ki value hogi, it will be less. So it will be approximately 0.1, right? Now uh, let us substitute here, what will be the value of KSP? KSP will be, what S into 0.1 ka whole square. Why? Because we have two OH minus ions here. Right? So, it will be what? KSP is 10 raised to power minus 16 into S. It will be 10, uh, 1 upon 0 0.001. Right? 0 0.01. So, it will be what? 10 raised to power minus 16 divided by 0 0.01. So, I will multiply it by 100 indirectly. So, it will be 10 raised to power minus 14. Let's check what is the correct option. Correct option is option number third. Yeah? Are you all with me? Okay. Understood? So next. How many of the following species are amphiprotic? Now what is amphiprotic? Amphi means, amphiprotic means they can donate the H plus, they can accept the H plus. They can do both the things. Then only they will be amphiprotic. Right? So let us see H, uh, H2PO2 minus. First, H2PO2 minus. So when I'll add H plus, I'll be I'll be getting what H3PO2. If you remember the structure, it is a monobasic acid. It cannot give now. Can it give one more H minus? No, it cannot give this reaction will not take place. It is a monobasic acid. Why? Because it contains only one OH bond. So if I talk about the structure H3PO2, sorry, this will be H and this will be H. So we have only one ionizable here OH bond. So that is why it will give only one H plus. So after giving H plus, it will form this. But it cannot give this H, these H. Why? Because the electronegativity difference between phosphorus and hydrogen is very less. So, here this bond ko break karna, it's not easy for us. More amount of energy is required. That's why in acidic character, these H are not ionized. Which ones are these? So, this cannot be our answer because it is amphiprotic. It can gain, but it can't lose H+. 
सो so, ये तो नहीं होगा ठीक है कमिंग टू एच सीओ थ्री माइनस सो वी हैव एच सीओ थ्री माइनस तो इस पे अगर H प्लस गेन कराएंगे तो क्या मिलेगा एच टू सी ओ थ्री इट विल ऑल्सो लूज इट कैन लूज H प्लस यस इट कैन लूज एंड फॉर्म द कार्बोनेट आयन सो ये गेन भी कर सकता है लूज भी कर सकता है सो यस दिस इज एम प्रोटिक राइट तो एक हमारा हो गया ये वाला ये है नेक्स्ट एन एच थ्री वॉट अबाउट एन एच थ्री यस एन एच थ्री कैन गेन एज वेल एज लूज तो एन एच थ्री कैन गेन टू फॉर्म एन एच फोर प्लस इट कैन लूज टू फॉर्म एन एच टू माइनस राइट सो ये दे भी सकता है ले भी सकता है सो इट इज अगेन विल हैव टू काउंट दिस इन एम फी प्रोटिक स्पीशीज नेक्स्ट इज डी एच सी ओ माइनस सो दिस इज वॉट विल एड एच प्लस एंड विल बी गेटिंग वॉट फॉर्मिक एसिड इट हैज ओनली वन एच विच इट कैन डोनेट अगेन ये जो है वो सी एच वाला है ना दिस सो इट कैन यहां से वो एच वाला ही दे सकता था ये अब दोबारा अगर मैं इसको एच देने बोलूंगी तो इट विल नॉट एग्री इट विल नॉट गिव बिकॉज अगेन इज बॉन्ड इज स्ट्रॉन्ग सो दिस कैन नॉट बी अवर आंसर सो विल इग्नोर दिस नेक्स्ट एच टू पी ओ थ्री नाउ द लास्ट ऑप्शन इज एच टू पी ओ थ्री एच टू पी ओ थ्री माइनस सो इट कैन गेन एच प्लस टू गिव मी वॉट एच थ्री पी ओ थ्री एंड इट कैन ऑल्सो लूज कैन इट लूज येस इट कैन लूज एच पी ओ थ्री टू माइनस वाई बिकॉज इट कंटेन्स टू ओ एच बॉन्ड दिस इज अ वॉट डाई बेसिक एसिड दिस इज अ डाई बेसिक एसिड इट कैन डोनेट टू सो लेट एस टॉक अबाउट दिस स्ट्रक्चर इट कंटेन्स टू ओ एच बॉन्ड तो ये आयनाइजेबल एच है इसके पास टू दैट इज वाई इट कैन गिव दिस टू एंड इट कैन गेन एट वेल एस इट कैन लूज एच प्लस सो वॉट वॉट द नंबर ऑफ एम फी प्रोटिक आर वन टू एंड थ्री सो वॉट इज द करेक्ट आंसर करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर फोर क्लियर नेक्स्ट इन हाइड्रोजन स्पेक्ट्रम अ सीरीज लिमिट इज फाउंड एट वन टू वन एट सिक्स पॉइंट थ्री इट बिलोंग्स टू वॉट so series limit is what series limit that the series will end after that so we we can say that our n2 will be infinity right so i am talking about a series limit of one compound of hydrogen atom so generally what is the formula formula is 1 by lambda is equal to this is given in terms of wave number or wave number is equal to r z square 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square right so 1 by lambda this is wave number this is already given to us r z is what for hydrogen it is 1 so r is you know what this is r now 1 by n1 square minus 1 by infinity ka because we are talking about series limit so that is why i placed here infinity so what it will be i just need to calculate the value of this n1 square i'll substitute the value of r so after substituting the value of r what is the answer i'll be getting i'll be getting this value of n1 now for lyman series what is n1 it will be 1 for balmer it will be 2 for parson it will be 3 and bracket it will be 4 so here what is the value of n1 square will be getting so it will be 186.3 by r which will be equal to 1 by n1 square so i'll do the reciprocal n1 square will be or i can directly write what is the value of 1 by r so 1 8.6 one by r is 911 angstrom right so it will be 1 by n1 square from here you can find the value of n1 i think it will it, it should be 3 approximate 3 so my answer will be partition series you can calculate do this calculations Which of the following carbon ion is more stable? So carbon ion is what electron rich. So it will be stabilized by a group which will decrease its electron density. So if we have a electron withdrawing group, it will stabilize the carbon ion. Yes. So let's talk about these examples here. I have OCH3. This is electron donating group. 
it will donate the electrons to the ring and intensify the negative charge of the carbon ion. Next, methyl group, methyl group is again electron donating group. So, it will give electrons to the ring, it will be activated and you know uh, this carbon ion will become less stable, it will be destabilized. Here we have NO2 group which is a strong electron withdrawing group. It will take electron from the ring. That is why you know this negative charge will be neutralized. Dheere dheere negative charge ring ki taraf jata rahega and it will be stabilized. So what is the correct answer? Correct answer is option number 4. Right? Okay, next question. Copper electrode is dipped in point two molar of its solution. So, copper is dipped in its own solution at 298 Kelvin. Assuming that the salt is 50 percent dissociated, the reduction potential of the electrode is. So, you know we are uh, talking about the reduction then uh, Cu2 plus will give me what uh, plus 2 electron it will form this. Now, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 molar is the initial concentration. Now, the reaction is taking place 50 percent. So, now what will be the concentration 0 0.1? Yes, we need to find what? We need to find the value of the electrode cell. Now, what is happening here? Copper is dipped, no? So, the reaction will be reverse. Just a second. Huh? Reaction will not be this, no? Reaction will be reverse. So, let us talk. We are dipping copper, so it will become copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons, right? We need to just find the value of reduction potential of this electrode. So, it will be what E is equal to E naught minus 0 0.059 by N. So, what is the value of N? N is the number of electrons transferred, so it is 2 log of what it will be copper Right now, you uh, you always have to remember that this is in terms of this is a reduction potential. So we need to write our reaction in terms of what what to say. Yeah, so we have we need to write this in terms of reduction potential. So it will be Cu two plus plus 2 electron giving me copper. So, if this is solid. So, it, it will be what here log of copper upon log of copper 2 plus ion. So, this will be 1, this will be what? Now, the concentration is becoming half because it is 50 percent dissociated. So, I will just substitute the values 0 0.34 minus 0 0.059 by 2 log of Copper 1, this is 0 0.1, right? Now, we will uh, solve. So, this will be approximately what? 0 0.03. So, 0 0.34 minus 0 0.03 into 1 by what is this? 0 0.1. It will become 10, log 10 will be 1. So, what is the value? It will be 0 0.31. So, what will be my answer? My answer will be option number third. At 1200 Kelvin, beryllium chloride exists as X. Hybridization of central atom is X. So, at 12 at a high temperature, beryllium chloride exists as this. You know, BCl2 only. So, now we need to identify the hybridization. So, it is linear. BCl2, it exists as BCl2 only. It will be linear and the angle will be 180 degree. What will be the hybridization? The hybridization will be SP. So, my answer will be option number third. Next, a oh, very common reaction. Uh, remember in organic chemistry, the aldehyde and ketones are very, very important. So, oh, please write all the name reactions in your notebook. Still, we have some days left. If you haven't done this, please do this. Give your, give these tests, please analyze where are you wrong, where you know, are you uh, doing uh, problems, are you facing any problem in understanding the question or you know, in doing some calculations. So, please analyze these papers. After giving these tests, please analyze 
what is the problem where what is the wrong area which you are facing and you know where your marks are getting deducted and please follow ncrt inorganic chemistry ke liye ncrt padh lo abhi bhi time hai ho sakta hai agar end time mein dekho wahi yaad karna hai abhi organic aur physical to organic mein kya hota hai concept wise mechanism wagera hota hai physical mein calculations hote hain to abhi agar aapko lagta hai ki aapne theek thaak padh liya don't stuck to them stick to इन ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री बिकॉज इन ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री में वी नीड टू मेमोराइज सम थिंग्स तो मेमोराइज आपको अभी याद रहेगा ना आपका एग्जाम आने वाला है तो एग्जाम सामने रहेगा अभी अभी पढ़ के जाओगे तो फ्रेश फ्रेश रहेगा पॉलीमर्स केमिस्ट्री इन एवरी डे लाइफ यू नो जो भी इन ऑर्गेनिक के एस ब्लॉक पी ब्लॉक या फिर डी एन एफ कॉर्डिनेशन इनसे बहुत क्वेश्चन आते हैं ठीक है सो रिमेंबर दिस अभी अभी ये इन ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री पर थोड़ा ज़्यादा ध्यान हमको देना है ठीक है so coming to this question the addition of hcn to carbonyl compound is an example of what see so i am talking about a carbonyl compound this is a carbonyl compound now when i react it with hcn what happens first cn comes and it attacks we know that this is a partial positive and this is partial negative why because oxygen is electronegative so this will be partial negative here minus plus सी एन कहाँ जाएगा यहाँ पर सो सी एन विल कम हीयर एंड यू नो दिस बॉन्ड विल शिफ्ट हीयर सी एन जैसे ही यहाँ आता है अटैक करेगा दिस बॉन्ड विल शिफ्ट हीयर एंड ओ माइनस एंड समवेयर आर आर ग्रुप जो भी यहाँ पर लगा होगा सो दिस इज अ न्यूक्लियोफाइल इलेक्ट्रॉन रिच नेगेटिव चार्ज सो न्यूक्लियोफिलिक आके लग गया ना यहाँ पर नेक्स्ट स्टेप में क्या होगा एच प्लस आएगा एंड वी विल बी गेटिंग दिस कंपन ओ एच एंड सी एन दिस इज वॉट साइनो तो so, क्या यहाँ पर कुछ एलिमिनेशन हुआ नहीं हुआ राइट right, तो एलिमिनेशन तो ऑप्शन में ही नहीं था मैम सो so, यहाँ पर कौन आया न्यूक्लियोफाइल आया तो ये तो हट जाएगा अब न्यूक्लियोफिलिक सब्सटीट्यूशन और एडिशन सब्सटीट्यूशन हुआ है क्या क्या सी ने आके किसी को रिप्लेस किया नो सी एन इज कमिंग एंड एडिंग हियर सो वॉट इज दंसर न्यूक्लियोफिलिक एडिशन रिएक्शन नेक्स्ट विच ऑफ दी फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट आर करेक्ट एन ई सी एल हैज हायर लैट इज एनर्जी देन KCl. So lattice energy is directly proportional to the charge of ions, of ions, and inversely proportional to the size of ions. Right. So let us talk about NaCl and KCl. In NaCl and KCl, I have the common anion, so I'll see only on the basis of the cations. now they have same charge so i'll go for the next factor that is the size of ions which is more size sodium or potassium potassium has more size so it will have less lattice energy right it will have let, less lattice energy so what is the correct option ye to sahi hai ki nacl has higher lattice energy this is correct a is correct a sare options mein next nacl is less ionic than kcl Is this correct? Now, अभी आयनिक कैरेक्टर के लिए हम क्या करते हैं फाजांस रूल रिमेंबर साइज और चार्ज पे वो भी डिपेंड करता है सो एन ए सी एल का जिसका हम बोलते हैं जिसका साइज जिसका साइज कम है उसकी पोलराइजिंग पावर ज्यादा होगी राइट तो इट विल बी मोर कोवलेंट सो दैट इज वाई वी कैन से दैट एन ए सी एल विल बी मोर कोवलेंट एंड के सी एल विल बी मोर आयनिक राइट right? तो इसका मतलब क्या है कि ज्यादा कोवलेंट होगा मतलब कम आयनिक होगा तो ये भी सही है ये कहां से पता चला फाजांस रूल नेक्स्ट एन ई सी एल इज आयनिक बाय सी यू सी एल इज कोवलेंट सो दिस इज आल्सो करेक्ट व्हेन वी आर कंपेयरिंग द एस ब्लॉक एलिमेंट्स एंड डी ब्लॉक एलिमेंट्स विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू देयर पोलराइजिंग पावर सो कौन जीत जाता है पोलराइजिंग पावर इज मोर इन दैट केस ऑफ इन केस ऑफ डी ब्लॉक एलिमेंट सो दैट इज वाई यू सी एल इज कोवलेंट एंड दिस इज आयनिक तो ये भी सही है थर्ड ए एल सी एल थ्री एज हायर हाइड्रेशन एनर्जी अगर हमारा चार्ज ज्यादा होता है हाइड्रेशन एनर्जी भी इज डायरेक्टली प्रपोर्शनल टू दार्ज ऑफ आयंस और अगर चार्ज ज्यादा होगा सो हाइड्रेशन विल बी मोर हाइड्रेशन एनर्जी विल बी मोर सो दिस इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट सो ऑल ए बी सी डी आर करेक्ट सो वॉट इज माई आंसर ऑप्शन नंबर फोर्थ clear remember this concept of lattice energy if lattice energy is more ionic character will be more but 
also at the same time यहाँ पर फजांस रूल लगता है वेन एवर वी आर नीड टू कंपेयर द आयनिक कैरेक्टर और कोवलेंट कैरेक्टर प्लीज चेक द रूल्स ऑफ फजांस रूल्स ठीक है ओके इक्लिब्रियम कॉन्स्टेंट फॉर अ हाइपोथेटिकल रिएक्शन ए गिव्स टू बी एट 400 केल्विन इज दिस 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 एक्चुअली ये ऐसा होगा 10 रेस्ट टू पार टू मोलर राइट सो के वन इज गिवन टू अस एट टेम्परेचर 400 केल्विन नाउ नेक्स्ट एट 500 केल्विन फॉर द सेम रिएक्शन इक्लिब्रियम कॉन्स्टेंट इज दिस सो के टू इज 2 into 10 raised to power 2 m and T2 is 500 Kelvin. Right? There is some printing error. It has to be A. If it is not, we can understand that it is increasing. Right? So, K1, what is happening? With the increase of temperature, the value of equilibrium constant is increasing. Right? When is this? It is when our reaction is endothermic. So, endothermic reaction, mein, if you remember, Endothermic reactions में क्या होता है? With the increase in temperature, the value of K also increases. But if reverse, अगर हमारे पास exothermic reaction होती है, then the reaction is reverse. कि अगर temperature बढ़ाएंगे, तो value of K will decrease. Now coming to this question, आगे देखते क्या पूछा है? According to Lee-Chatelier principle, favorable condition for the formation of A R. Now they want us to increase the amount of A. They want us to proceed the direction in the back side. Now, as I told you, whenever, uh, agar hum forward direction mein ja rahi hai reaction, so forward direction mein ye kya hai? Endothermic. We don't want this. We want reaction hamari backward direction mein ja hai. So, agar hum backward ki baat karenge, so backward matlab, backward reaction kya hogi? Exothermic. Right, backward reaction will be exothermic. अब हमें देखना है कि टेम्परेचर और प्रेशर किस कंडीशन में होंगे कि बैकवर्ड जाएगा प्रेशर के लिए क्या करते हैं व्हेन वी आर इंक्रीजिंग प्रेशर द रिएक्शन मूव टुवर्ड्स द डायरेक्शन ऑफ लेस नंबर ऑफ मोल्स राइट सो यहां पर मेरे लेस नंबर ऑफ मोल्स कहां पर हैं टुवर्ड्स द रिएक्टेंट साइड मैं यही चाहती हूं तो मैं क्या करूंगी प्रेशर इंक्रीज कर दूं क्योंकि प्रेशर इंक्रीज करने से कहां जाएगी बैकवर्ड डायरेक्शन में राइट सो प्रेशर इंक्रीज होना चाहिए मतलब हाई प्रेशर तो हाई प्रेशर वाला ऑप्शन मेरे पास है ये नहीं होगा और ये नहीं होगा सो वन और थ्री कैन बी आर आंसर नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट टेम्परेचर सो बैकवर्ड रिएक्शन इज एक्सोथर्मिक नाउ व्हाट हैपेंस इन एक्सोथर्मिक रिएक्शन अगर हम टेम्परेचर बढ़ाते हैं तो रिएक्शन मूव्स इन द बैकवर्ड डायरेक्शन राइट और रॉन्ग सी रिएक्शन बैकवर्ड वाली एक्सोथर्मिक है मतलब टेम्परेचर बढ़ाने पे क्या होता है रिएक्शन कहां जाती है फॉरवर्ड डायरेक्शन में या बैकवर्ड डायरेक्शन में जाती है नॉर्मल केस देखते हैं नॉर्मल केस में क्या होता है इफ अगर हमारी एंडोथर्मिक रिएक्शन है तो टेंपरेचर बढ़ाने पे फॉरवर्ड डायरेक्शन में जाती है ठीक है तो उल्टा केस क्या होगा यहां पर टेंपरेचर बढ़ाने पे तो फॉरवर्ड पे जाने वाली है तो टेंपरेचर कम करने पे कहां जाएगी बैकवर्ड डायरेक्शन सो आंसर क्या होना चाहिए लो टेंपरेचर एंड हाई प्रेशर लो टेंपरेचर एंड हाई प्रेशर in the Bohr's orbit, what is the ratio of kinetic energy and total energy of the electron? So, what is the value of total energy? Total energy is minus 13.6 Z square by N square. This is total energy and what is kinetic energy? Kinetic energy is 13.6 Z square by This is an EV. What is the ratio? Kinetic energy and total energy ka ratio kya hoga? So, when I calculate the ratio, we can see and divide, these terms will be cancelled. What is the ratio? It will be minus 1. Yaad rakhna hai, kinetic energy or total energy are equal. But difference kya hota hai? Difference is only in their sign. Ek positive hoga to dusra negative hoga. Right? Also, potential energy ka kya hota hai? Potential energy in dono se hi डबल होती है याद रखना है सो आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर वन एसिटेल्डिहाइड कैन नॉट एक्सिबिट एसिटेल्डिहाइड कैन नॉट एक्सिबिट एसिटेल्डिहाइड इज दिस सो इट कैन नॉट एक्सिबिट आयोडू फॉर्म टेस्ट इट कैन गिव आपने पढ़ा है मैंने बताया था इथेनॉल इथेनॉल 
सेकेंडरी अल्कोहल एंड मिथाइल कीटोन ये सारे क्या देते हैं आयडोफॉर्म टेस्ट देते हैं तो आयडोफॉर्म टेस्ट देगा और क्या बना लेगा आपको पता है एसिड बनता है और एक सी एच थ्री वाला आयोडोफॉर्म बन जाता है येल्लो पीपीटी मिलती है बेनेडिक टेस्ट ये भी देगा ठीक है बेनेडिक टेस्ट कौन देते हैं कार्बोनल कंपाउंड्स देते हैं टॉलेंस टेस्ट भी कौन देगा ये देगा क्योंकि टॉलेंस टेस्ट भी कार्बोनल कंपाउंड्स देते हैं लेकिन उनमें कौन सिर्फ अल्डीहाइड तो ये भी अल्डीहाइड देगा ये भी अल्डीहाइड देगा राइट ल्यूकास टेस्ट ल्यूकास टेस्ट कौन देते हैं ल्यूकास टेस्ट इज गिवन बाय अल्कोहल्स इफ यू रिमेंबर इट इज अ टेस्ट विच इज यूज फॉर दी डिस्टिंग प्राइमरी सेकेंडरी एंड टर्शरी अल्कोहल वी आर एक्चुअली रिएक्टिंग आर एल्कोहल वन डिग्री टू डिग्री और थ्री डिग्री कोई भी अल्कोहल की रिएक्शन किससे करते हैं विथ जेड एन सी एल टू एन एच सी एल राइट सो इससे करते हैं तो हमें अलग 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 टाइम पे रिएक्शन देखने मिलता है प्राइमरी के लिए हमें कैटलिस्ट चाहिए जेड एन सी एल टू तो और हीट करना पड़ेगा तब जाके क्लोराइड बनेगा सेकेंडरी में क्या होता है इन सेकेंडरी थोड़े टाइम बाद टर्बिडिटी आ जाती है टर्शरी इमीजिएटली रिएक्ट कर जाते हैं जेड एन सी एल टू की रिक्वायरमेंट नहीं होती सो दिस रिएक्शन इज विल नॉट बी गिवन बाई एसिटाइल डिहाइट सो माई आंसर विल बी ऑप्शन नंबर थर्ड नेक्स्ट अ मिक्सचर ऑफ ए एंड बी शो पॉजिटिव डिविएशन फ्रॉम राउल्स लॉ वेन सो आपको चार कंडीशन दिए हैं सो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फ्रॉम सोल्यूशन जनरली आई थिंक इन एवरी ग्रैंड टेस्ट यू माइट हैव ऑब्जर्व यू आर फ्रीक्वेंटली गेटिंग क्वेश्चन ऑन पॉजिटिव डिविएशन नेगेटिव डिविएशन और आइडल सोल्यूशन नॉन आइडल सोल्यूशन सो दिस इज जस्ट टू मेक यू ऑल वेरी फेमिलियर विद द क्वेश्चन और द डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन विच यू कैन गेट इन ऑन दिस फ्रॉम दिस चैप्टर सो पॉजिटिव डिविएशन कब होता है इन पॉजिटिव डिविएशन ए बी इंट्रैक्शन आर स्ट्रॉगर देन ए बी बी रॉन्ग दिस इज इन नेगेटिव डिविएशन नेगेटिव डिविएशन में ए बी ए बी इंट्रैक्शन आर स्ट्रॉगर ए बी इंस्ट्रैक्शन इज वीकर दिस इज द करेक्ट आंसर बिकॉज इन पॉजिटिव डिविएशन द इंट्रैक्शन और द फोर्सेज ऑफ द सोल्यूशन विल बी लेस देन द इंडिविजुअल ए एंड बी बी इंट्रैक्शन नेक्स्ट We mixing less than zero, no, wrong, wrong. So what is the correct option? Option number two. Ethanol when heated with felling solution it gives the precipitate of. So ethanol, ethanol is again CH three CHO. It will react with felling solution. So what will I get? I'll get the CH three CO H plus साथ में Cu two O which gives red PPT. So what is the correct answer? Cu two. Reagents used for the separation of acetaldehyde from acetophenone. Simple, direct. उन्होंने पूछा है कि आप aldehyde को ketone से कैसे separate कर सकते हो? Aldehyde, this is the ketone. Now how can you distinguish aldehyde from ketone? First, NH2OH. ये क्या होता है? Hydroxylamine. तो इसका ये डायरेक्ट रिएक्शन करेगा इसमें भी कार्बोनल है इसमें भी कार्बोनल है तो इसको तो नहीं यूज कर सकते हैं नेक्स्ट एन एच आई टू दिस इज वॉट आइडोफॉर्म का रिएजेंट है एसिटोफिनोन भी देता है बिकॉज इट इज अ मिथाइल कीटोन एसिटल तो देता ही है मैंने आपको बताया था तो ये भी नहीं देगा ये क्या है इस ये भी वही वाला जो जैसा ऊपर वाला रिएक्शन होता है हाइड्रोक्सिल अमीन से वैसे ही वाला होगा कार्बाजाइट से सेमी कार्बाजाइट सेमी कार्बाजोन बनेगा So what is the correct answer? NaHCO3. This will react with NaHCO3. Addition हो जाएगा SO3 Na का, ठीक है? और OH ऐसा कुछ reaction होगा. But this reaction will not take place in ketone. It will react with NaH SO3. Sorry, and not NaHCO3. So क्या मिलेगा? मुझे addition हो जाता है. और यहां पर मिलता है मुझे ऐसा कुछ ठीक है सो दिस विल बी अवर प्रोडक्ट बट यहां पर ये एसिटोफिनोन ऐसे रिएक्शन नहीं देगा सो आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर सेकेंड फ्रीजिंग पॉइंट ऑफ सो सोल्यूशन से नेक्स्ट टाइप के क्वेश्चंस कहां से आते हैं फ्रॉम कोलिगेटिव प्रॉपर्टीज फ्रीजिंग पॉइंट ऑफ पॉइंट वन मोलल सो वॉट इज दोलिटी हियर प्लीज राइट दी थिंग्स विच आर गिवन इन दी क्वेश्चन प्लीज राइट कई बार ऐसा होता है एग्जाम में पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस है मेरा कभी भी हम भी कोई एग्जाम देते हैं ना एक बार क्वेश्चन पढ़ा नहीं समझ में आया 
ठीक है लेकिन अगर आप क्वेश्चन पढ़ के जो जो भी वैल्यूज होती हैं उसको लिख लो एक बार प्लीज नोट डाउन वी हैव टाइम इतना टाइम होता है उसको लिखो सो so, लिखते लिखते यू विल रियलाइज कि कौन सा फॉर्मूला लगाना है कौन से टॉपिक का ये क्वेश्चन है रिमेंबर दिस इफ यू फेस एनी प्रॉब्लम यू नो कुछ भी रीडिंग में प्रॉब्लम आ रहा है क्वेश्चन समझ में ही नहीं आया प्लीज राइट दी थिंग्स विच आर गिवन इन दी क्वेश्चन लिखते लिखते ही पता चल जाएगा अच्छा ये वाला फॉर्मूला था कई बार लिखते लिखते याद आ जाता है कभी भूल भी जाते हैं तो ठीक है प्लीज कीप दिस थिंग इन माइंड इट विल बी हेल्पफुल फॉर यू सो फ्रीजिंग पॉइंट ऑफ मोलल दिस इज गिवन एन इज एन ए सी एल एक्वस सोल्यूशन वॉट नाउ एन ए सी एल इज एन इलेक्ट्रोलाइट राइट दिस इज एन इलेक्ट्रोलाइट विच इज हंड्रेड परसेंट आयन आई सो दे आर टेलिंग एस दैट यू नो एन ए सी एल इज हंड्रेड परसेंट आयन आई वॉट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ अल्फा इट इज वन और तो वी कैन से इट इज अ स्ट्रॉन्ग इलेक्ट्रोलाइट वी ऑलरेडी नो नाउ के एफ फॉर वॉटर इज ऑलरेडी गिवन टू अस के एफ इज वन क्या निकालना है फ्रीजिंग पॉइंट निकालना है फ्रीजिंग पॉइंट ऑफ दी सोल्यूशन एक्वस सो यू नो डेल्टा टी एफ क्या होता है डिप्रेशन इन फ्रीजिंग पॉइंट होता है ना सो इट इज वॉट टी एफ माइनस टी एफ नॉट और टी एफ माइनस क्या होगा ये किसका होता है सॉल्वेंट ये सोल्यूशन डिप्रेशन होता है या एलिवेशन होता है डिप्रेशन होता है सो दिस विल बी सॉल्वेंट And this will be for solution. So ऐसा आएगा क्या कई बार confusion हो जाता है हमको तो ऐसा होगा या नहीं होगा तो समझा करो क्या हो रहा है Solution का कम हो रहा है या ज्यादा हो रहा है Depression हो रहा है ना तो reverse होना चाहिए क्योंकि solvent का ज्यादा होगा इसका कम होगा तो इसीलिए हमेशा ध्यान रखना है ये TF एफ नॉट आएगा और ये टी एफ आएगा क्योंकि हम लोग बॉइलिंग पॉइंट से ना कन्फ्यूज हो जाते हैं कि किसको पहले लिखना है तो कैसा कन्फ्यूजन ना हो तो एक बार लिख के देख लो ठीक है तो ये रिवर्स हो जाएगा यहां पर इसको मैं इरेज कर देती हूं टी एफ नॉट क्या है जीरो होगा क्योंकि वाटर गिवन है सो दिस विल बी जीरो डिग्री सेल्सियस माइनस टी एफ आपको निकालना है तो अल्टीमेटली आपको क्या निकालना है डेल्टा टी एफ निकालना है सो हम डेल्टा टी एफ निकालेंगे क्या होता है डेल्टा टी एफ इट इज इक्वल टू आई इंटू के एफ इंटू एम ना वॉट विल बी आई एन ई सी एल है सो एन ई सी एल विल डिसोसिएट टू गिव मी एन ए प्लस एंड सी एल माइनस आई एन सो वॉट इज एन हियर एन इज हियर टू सो फॉर स्ट्रॉन्ग इलेक्ट्रोलाइट आई इज इक्वल टू एन सो आई जस्ट सब्सटीट्यूट ऑल दी वैल्यूज डेल्टा टी एफ विल बी टू इन टू के एफ इज वन पॉइंट एट एंड एम इज वॉट पॉइंट वन सो वॉट विल बी द आंसर इट विल बी 2 into 1.8, so it will be 3.6 into 0.1. It will be what? 0.36 degree Celsius or Kelvin same hoga. So this will be 0.36. So 0.36 is equal to zero minus Tf. So Tf will be what? Zero minus 0.36. Uh, so it will be again. प्लीज चेक एक बार कुछ गलती तो नहीं की है मैंने पॉइंट वन हो जाएगा सो इट विल बी माइनस पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स केल्विन और डिग्री सेल्सियस ठीक है प्लीज चेक कर लो एक बार सो वन पॉइंट एट गिवन है यहाँ पर आपको सो यहाँ पर यहाँ तक तो ठीक है कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है कैलकुलेशन एक बार चेक कर लेना वन पॉइंट एट इंटू टू थ्री पॉइंट सिक्स होगा इंटू पॉइंट वन सो इट विल बी पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स आफ्टर सॉल्विंग जीरो माइनस पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स इट विल बी नेगेटिव सो वॉट can we are answer answer will be approximate this clear difference hamesha same hota hai chahe degree celsius ho chahe kelvin ho so answer will be or i can write minus 0.36 degree celsius acetaldehyde gives orange color ppt on treatment with so orange color ppt this All will react with acetaldehyde. लेकिन यहां पर इसका एन एच की प्रेजेंस में क्या होगा एल्डोल राइट एन एच सी ओ थ्री मैंने अभी आपको बता दिया ये क्या बनेगा हाइड्रोक्सिल अमीन है तो ये ऑक्साइम बनाएगा ऑक्साइम का कलर वलर के बारे में हमने कोई बात नहीं की है लेकिन टू और टू फोर डी एन पी टेस्ट होता है इसका बहुत प्यारा येल्लो कलर आता है इन लैब्स वी यूज टू डू दिस टेस्ट वेन एसिटेलडीहाइड इज रियक्टिंग विद टू फोर डी एन पी वी आर गेटिंग टू फोर हाइड्रोजोन मिल जाता है 
तो इसका ऑरेंज कलर आता है सो करेक्ट आंसर विल बी ऑप्शन नंबर वन द एज लेंथ ऑफ द यूनिट सेल इन टर्म्स ऑफ रेडियस ऑफ स्पीयर कॉन्स्टिट्यूटिंग एफ सी सी बी सी सी एंड सिंपल क्यूबिक सेल आर डायरेक्ट रिलेशन है एज लेंथ का विथ रेडियस सो अनदर वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम सॉलिड स्टेट डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन है वी रिमेंबर सिंपल क्यूब के लिए हमेशा याद रहता है इट इज टू आर सो दिस विल नॉट बी दंसर्स आंसर आर आई द दीज और दीज कमिंग टू बी सी सी एंड एफ सी सी फॉर बी सी सी इट इज टू टू रूट टू एंड फॉर यू बी एफ सी सी इट इज टू रूट टू बी सी सी इट इज फोर आर बाय रूट थ्री सो वॉट इज दंसर आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर वन क्वेश्चन ऑन केमिकल कानेटिक्स ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द फर्स्ट ऑर्डर रिएक्शन इज कंप्लीटेड इन फिफ्टी मिनट्स द परसेंटेज लेफ्ट अन रिएक्टेड इन हंड्रेड मिनट इज फर्स्ट ऑर्डर रिएक्शन फटाफट से ये लिख लो 2.303 पॉइंट थ्री जीरो थ्री बाय टी हाफ लॉग ऑफ ए अपॉन ए माइनस एक्स ठीक है सो अब मैं इसको सब्सटीट्यूट करती हूँ के क्या होगा के मुझे निकालना है दो बार मैं सेम फॉर्मूला लगाऊंगी फर्स्ट क्या है फिफ्टी मिनट्स और ये लॉग ऑफ ट्वेंटी परसेंट कम्प्लीट है हंड्रेड लिया इनिशियली सो हंड्रेड में से ट्वेंटी परसेंट इज कम्प्लीटेड सो ट्वेंटी परसेंट इज कम्प्लीटेड so this will give me the value of a i'll uh, first k now for second i need to determine so second ke liye k to same hoga hi so it will be 2.303 by 100 log of a upon a minus x now initial to abhi bhi mera wahi hai na a a to 100 hi rehne wala hai to ye yahan kya ho jayega ultimately mujhe nikalna kya hai I need to क्या निकालना है परसेंटेज लेफ्ट अन रियक्टेड कितना मेरे पास बच जाता है ठीक है तो देखते हैं ये क्या होता है इनिशियल तो दिस विल बी सेम इट विल बी वॉट हंड्रेड माइनस एक्स इज एक्स जो चला गया राइट सो आई कैलकुलेट दी वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स बट रिमेंबर मुझे क्या पूछा है कितना अन रियक्टेड बच गया एक्स कितना है जो चला जाता है हंड्रेड माइनस एक्स विल गिव मी जो बचा हुआ है सो आई अल्टीमेटली नीड टू कैलकुलेट दी वैल्यू ऑफ हंड्रेड माइनस एक्स राइट सो so, ये दोनों सेम है सो आई इक्वेट आई इक्वेट तो मुझे क्या मिलेगा ध्यान से देखो सो आई राइट टू पॉइंट थ्री जीरो थ्री बाई फिफ्टी लॉग ऑफ हंड्रेड बाई एट्टी विच विल बी इक्वल टू टू पॉइंट थ्री जीरो थ्री बाय हंड्रेड लॉग ऑफ हंड्रेड अपॉन हंड्रेड माइनस एक्स तो इसको मैं डायरेक्ट ही वाई मान लूँ कुछ क्योंकि मुझे इसी की वैल्यू निकालनी है हंड्रेड माइनस एक्स की कि कितना रिएक्टेंट मेरे पास अभी बच गया है ठीक है सो so, ये हो जाएगा टू ये हो जाएगा कैंसिल सो so, यहां पर क्या है लॉग ऑफ हंड्रेड बाय एट्टी इज इक्वल टू हाफ लॉग ऑफ हंड्रेड बाय वाई राइट अब मैं क्या कर सकती हूँ ये हाफ है तो मुझे लॉग को इक्वेट करना है तो उसको मैं पावर में भेज दू यहां पर सो आई कैन राइट एस हंड्रेड बाय एट्टी इज इक्वल टू हंड्रेड बाय वाई की पावर हाफ कैन आई राइट लाइक दिस या फिर मैं टू को यहां भेज सकती हूँ तो ये टू ये स्क्वायर में चला जाएगा तो नेक्स्ट स्टेप में ऐसे भी कर सकते हैं हम इसको कैंसिल कर दो आप टेन बाई एट स्क्वायर में हम पहले ही कर देते कर सकते थे नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम सो ये कितना हो जाएगा हंड्रेड बाय सिक्सटी फोर इज इक्वल टू हंड्रेड बाय वाई सो हंड्रेड हंड्रेड बाई की वैल्यू क्या आ जाएगी सिक्सटी फोर सो आंसर क्या हो जाएगा सिक्सटी फोर बच्चे कुछ लोगों ने 36 भी मार्क किया होगा बिकॉज उनको ये नहीं समझ में आया निकालना क्या था 36 परसेंट हो चुकी है बच्ची कितनी है 64 परसेंट सो आंसर इज 64 विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट अ डेफिशिएंसी विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द विटामिन सो ये तो बहुत कॉमन है विटामिन सी स्कर्वी होता है ब्लीडिंग गम्स करेक्ट विटामिन डी से रिकेट्स होता है ये भी सही है विटामिन ई डिक्रीज फर्टिलिटी एंड फ्रेजिलिटी ऑफ आर अगेन अ वेरी थियोरिटिकल क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम एन सी आर टी विटामिन के के की कमी से क्या होता है डिले क्लॉटिंग ये ईजी नहीं होती बल्कि उल्टा हो जाता है डिले हो जाती है सो दिस इज द रॉन्ग आंसर ठीक है तो डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम एन सी आर टी दैट इज वाई एम आस्किंग यू टू रीड 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 एन सी आर टी अभी भी वी हैव टाइम ठीक है टू डेज थर्टीन फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन थ्री डेज आर लेफ्ट जो केमिस्ट्री पढ़ रहे हो आप थोड़ा सा इनऑर्गेनिक की तरफ इंक्लाइंड होके वही वही जो टॉपिक्स हैं जो थ्योरी वाले हैं प्लीज गो थ्रू देम ओके 10 ग्राम ऑफ एन एच इज डिजोल्व इन 10 ग्राम ऑफ इन 10 एम ऑफ 5 मोलर एच 
एक्सेस ऑफ एच सी एल इज न्यूट्रलाइज बाय फाइव एम एल ऑफ टू मोलर बेरियम हाइड्रोक्साइड परसेंटेज प्योरिटी ऑफ कॉस्टिक सोडा इज सो हमें क्या निकालना है परसेंटेज प्योरिटी ऑफ कॉस्टिक सोडा टेन ग्राम इज टेकन सो लेट्स फाइंड वॉट इज रियक्शन विच इज टेकिंग प्लेस एच सी एल इज रियक्टिंग विथ बेरियम हाइड्रोक्साइड राइट सो इफ आई बैलेंस तो ये क्या हो जाएगा टू एच सी एल आई रिक्वायर सो वॉट विल बी दी आंसर बेरियम क्लोराइड प्लस टू एच टू सो नाउ आई विल कैलकुलेट द इक्वेलेंट्स दिस विल बी टेन एम एल सो टेन इंटू फाइव इट विल बी फिफ्टी मिली मोल्स राइट फिफ्टी मिली मोल्स here 5 into 2 that is 10 millimoles dekh lo ek bar 10 gram of nooh tha usko abhi bhul jate hain reaction kiski ho rahi hai reaction ho rahi hai hcl plus barium hydroxide acid base reaction ek bar to yahan par kya hoga hcl will react with barium hydroxide to give me this salt and water परसेंटेज प्योरिटी आई नीड टू कैलकुलेट फॉर कॉस्टिक सोडा तो सबसे पहले मैंने क्या किया रिएक्शन लिख दिया एंड आई कैलकुलेटेड द अमाउंट द एक्चुअल अमाउंट वी हैव एक्सेस ऑफ एच सी एल सो बेरियम हाइड्रोक्साइड विल बी द लिमिटिंग रिएजेंट तो ये पहले खत्म होगा ये बाद में खत्म होगा राइट या सर नो सो वॉट इज द मोल्स रेशियो मोल्स रेशियो इज टू इज टू वन तो so, ये पहले खत्म हो जाएगा जैसे ही ये खत्म होगा रिमेनिंग ऑफ दी एच बच जाने वाला है ठीक है अभी हम क्या करेंगे मेरे पास यहां पर ओ OH कितने हैं टू सो so, अगर मेरे पास यहां पर टेन मिली मोल्स हैं तो मुझे टू ओ OH चाहिए होंगे मतलब मेरे पास एक्चुअली कितने हो जाएंगे ट्वेंटी मिली मोल्स डबल हो रहा है राइट right? सो so, मैं देख रही हूं मेरे पास कितना एच बचेगा अमाउंट ऑफ एच सी एल लेफ्ट विल बी वॉट फिफ्टी माइनस ट्वेंटी दैट इज थर्टी मिली मोल्स राइट दिस विल बी द अमाउंट ऑफ एच सी एल लेफ्ट नाउ वेन आई एम रियक्टिंग एच सी एल विथ एन एच वॉट इज द रेशियो वन इज टू वन सो दिस विल बी द अमाउंट ऑफ एन एच ऑल्सो सो आई कैन से दैट यू नो द अमाउंट ऑफ एन एच इज ऑल्सो थर्टी मिली मोल्स थर्टी मिली मोल्स मतलब थर्टी इंटू टेन रेस टू पार माइनस थ्री नाउ वॉट विल आई डू आई दिस इज वॉट मोल्स आई फाइंड द वेट और मास ऑफ एन एच सो इट विल बी थर्टी इंटू टेन रेस टू पार माइनस थ्री इंटू फोर्टी सो दिस इज एन मोल ग्राम इट विल बी सॉरी इट विल बी Answer is in grams, so it will be what thirty into forty twelve hundred into so it will be one point two gram, right? One point two gram. Now I need to find the percentage purity. What will be the percentage purity? कितना react किया है one point two gram divided by कितना था ten gram into hundred, so it will be one ten. What is the answer? It will be twelve. ठीक है प्लीज चेक 12 ग्राम नहीं होगा परसेंटेज है मैम इट विल बी इन परसेंटेज सो व्हाट विल बी द आंसर आंसर विल बी ऑप्शन नंबर टू क्लियर फॉर एच टू गैस एट एक्सट्रीमली स्मॉल वॉल्यूम द कंप्रेसिबिलिटी फैक्टर जेड इज सो फॉर एच टू गैस द वैल्यू इज गिवन दैट यू नो वी आर टेकिंग अ वेरी स्मॉल वैल्यू सो वी नीड टू फाइंड द कंप्रेसिबिलिटी फैक्टर कैसे निकालते हैं equation is p plus a n square by v square v minus n b is equal to n r t now for one mole hum dekhenge n is equal to 1 so it will be p plus a by v square v minus b is equal to n r t sorry is equal to n b nahi aayega n is 1 right is equal to r t so what it will be so at small volume we can say at small v pressure will be high 
प्रेशर विल भी क्या हाई होगा प्रेशर हाई होगा तो प्रेशर के साथ वाला जो टर्म है इट कैन बी नेग्लेक्टेड सो दिस विल बी इक्वल टू अप्रोक्सीमेटली तो ये ऑलरेडी छोटा है ये छोटा है इसका स्क्वायर करेंगे और छोटा हो जाएगा तो ओवरऑल इस फैक्टर को नेग्लेक्ट कर सकते हैं दिस विल बी इक्वल टू पी नाउ दिस इज इक्वल टू पी सो इट विल बी पी वी माइनस बी इज इक्वल टू आर टी इस विल बी पी वी माइनस पी बी आर टी ना वॉट इज दिस आई एल टेक आर टी हियर सो पी वी बाय आर टी माइनस पी बी बाय आर टी इज इक्वल टू वन Now what is this? This is Z. Z is P B by R T. So Z will be equal to one plus P B by R T. So कौन सा हो जाएगा हमारा option? हमारा answer हो जाएगा option number two. One plus P B by R T. I hope this is clear. Remember ये वाला जो इसमें दो ही condition हो सकती हैं. Volume को या तो बहुत कम कर दो तो प्रेशर विल बी मोर या फिर वॉल्यूम बहुत ज्यादा होगी देन दिस फैक्टर विल बी अप्रोक्सीमेटली इक्वल टू वी दैट विल बी दर केस द इनकरेक्ट स्टेटमेंट फ्रॉम द फॉलोइंग इज आइसोथर्मल एक्सपेंशन हीट इज गिवन टू द सिस्टम यस व्हेन वी आर डूइंग आइसोथर्मल एक्सपेंशन हीट इज गिवन वी आर सप्लाइंग हीट फ्रॉम आउटसाइड वैक्यूम में वर्क डन इज जीरो वैक्यूम में फ्री एक्सपेंशन हो जाता है एक्सटर्नल प्रेशर जीरो होता है वर्क डन भी जीरो होता है Heat of formation is equal to the is equal to the heat of combustion of carbon. So this is also correct, right? Carbon जब O2 से combine करके CO2 देता है, so इनको हम क्या बोलेंगे? Heat of combustion, right? है ना? और अगर मैं formation की बात करूँ, so ये भी equal होगा, but ये sign क्या हो जाएगा? Opposite. Heat of formation. In isothermal expansion, delta U is negative. That is wrong. Isothermal me temperature is constant, so delta U is also zero. It is not negative. So answer is option number fourth. By froth flotation process, a mixture of ZnS and PbS can be separated by adding NaCN to form a complex X. The complex is. So whenever we have froth flotation uh, process, is generally used to you know. For the sulfide ores, concentration of sulfide ores. Now, if we have two sulfide ores, then we are uh, making it only reacting with one of the reactants, and we are adding a depressing agent, NaCN. So, suppose we have the sulfide ZnS and PbS, then what will happen? I'll add uh, NaCN, and you know, sodium is uh, zinc is reacted, so it will react with NaCN to form what? to form a coordination complex which is this Na2ZN CN4 ZN4 plus what is left we are getting Na2S so this will be complex because it is more reacting than lead so what will be the correct answer option number 3 The stability of lyophobic colloids is due to the presence of the charge on the colloidal particles. Removal of this charge make the car particles to form aggregate, which settle down. The process of setting of particle is known as. कभी भी हमें कुछ precipitate मिलता है, कुछ नीचे कुछ settle solid मिलता है, तो हम उसको precipitate बोलते हैं. The uh, this process is known as precipitation. तो ये तो सही है. But the other name of precipitation are coagulation, flocculation. So what is the correct answer? ऑप्शन नंबर फोर्थ नाउ क्वांटिटी इनकरेक्ट स्टेटमेंट निकालना है रिमेंबर दिस दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चंस आर कमिंग इन एग्जाम आइडेंटिफाई द करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट आइडेंटिफाई द इनकरेक्ट स्टेटमेंट दे आर जस्ट टेस्टिंग योर कॉन्सेप्ट्स दे आर अप्लाइंग टू थ्री कॉन्सेप्ट्स इन अ सिंगल क्वेश्चन ओके सो रिमेंबर वी नीड टू फाइंड द इनकरेक्ट स्टेटमेंट हियर क्वांटिटी ऑफ एंजाइम नीडेड टू कैटेलाइज अ रिएक्शन डिपेंड्स ऑन द क्वांटिटी ऑफ सबस्ट्रेट नो we have no relation with the quantity of substrate because the enzyme agar koi bhi reaction catalyze karni hai to enzyme bas hona chahiye we are not we are not concerned with the amount of substrate uh, amount of enzyme or catalyst so this is the wrong statement and enzyme reduce the magnitude of activation energy this is correct invertase and sucrase decreases the activation energy Yes, this is also correct. Catalyst कैसे work करता है activation energy को कम करके Many enzymes use a non-protein part. ये भी सही बात है This part इसको हम coenzyme बोलते हैं and the protein part is apoenzyme. 
so what is the correct answer option number 1 the number of sp2 F, uh, sp2 hybridized bond ye sp2 sp2 bond batana hai kitna hoga x mein so this is benzene c6h6 benzene ka hum reaction kar rahe hain hydrogen nickel ke presence mein so hame kya milega hydrogenation ho jata hai na ye milega aapko batana hai number of sp2 sp2 bonds kya koi bhi sp2 sp2 bond bada hai bacha hai nahi bacha so correct answer is zero कोई भी नहीं बचा sp2 sp2 तब होगा ना जब मेरे पास क्या है डबल बॉन्ड यहां कोई डबल बॉन्ड है ही नहीं सारे रिड्यूस हो गए x NaOH plus CaO से रिएक्ट करेगा ओके सो ये बनाता है x का हमें कोल्स इलेक्ट्रोलाइसिस जब हम करते हैं सो व्हाट विल बी y सो सबसे पहले जब कंबाइन करेगा क्या होता है कोल्स इलेक्ट्रोलाइसिस में हमारे पास एक कार्बोक्सिलिक एसिड का सॉल्ट होता है उसकी जब हम कोल्स इलेक्ट्रोलाइसिस करते हैं तो जो CO2 है जो कार्बोक्सिलिक वाला पार्ट होता है वो निकल लेता है और डाइमराइजेशन हो जाता है अल्कीन का ठीक है सो so, यहां पर x है मेरे पास ये आपको बताना है y तो ये जब कंबाइन करेगा इससे तो CO NA वाला पार्ट बन जाएगा और वो जब डाइमराइज करेगा तो क्या बनेगा अभी यहां पर देखो ये है मेरे पास तो ये वाला पार्ट क्या बन जाएगा CO NA जब ये डाइमराइज करेगा ये वाला पार्ट यहां पर ऐसा कुछ हो जाएगा ये डाइमराइज करेगा तो ये निकल लेगा तो ये कार्बन लेकिन रहने वाला है तो ये पूरा पार्ट रहने वाला है तो ये वाला ग्रुप होगा साथ में CH2 ग्रुप होगा ठीक है तो यहां पर देखो एक CH2 है पर वो डाइमराइज हो रहा है मतलब डबल होना चाहिए यहां पर इवन नंबर ऑफ कार्बन्स होने चाहिए तो ये तो नहीं होगा इसमें देखो इसमें तो CH2 को गायब ही कर दिया ये भी नहीं होगा ये भी नहीं होगा आंसर क्या होगा ऑप्शन नंबर 2 स्क्वायर प्लेनर कॉम्प्लेक्स इज फॉर्मड बाय हाइब्रिडाइजेशन ऑफ व्हिच एटॉमिक ऑर्बिटल्स स्क्वायर प्लेनर कॉम्प्लेक्सेस में हाइब्रिडाइजेशन होता है dsp2 कौन सी d ऑर्बिटल होती है dx2 y2 तो यहां पर dx2 y2 s में तो कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है ये क्या होगा px और py सो so, आंसर क्या हो जाएगा आंसर हो जाएगा ऑप्शन नंबर 2 द करेक्ट ऑर्डर ऑफ द आयनिक रेडii ऑफ ये ये अब देखना लेंथनाइट कॉन्ट्रैक्शन सबने सुना होगा लेंथनाइट कॉन्ट्रैक्शन में क्या होता है कि हम जैसे-जैसे पीरियड वाइज मूव करते हैं देयर इज डिक्रीज इन द एटॉमिक रेडियस यस व्हाई बिकॉज़ ऑफ इंक्रीज इन न्यूक्लियर चार्ज बट लेंथनाइट्स में इतना ज्यादा चेंज नहीं आता है जितना आना चाहिए था यू नो डिक्रीज तो होती है बट ज्यादा वैल्यू से नहीं होती है फॉर एग्जांपल व्हेन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट लेंथनाइट इट इज अप्रोक्सीमेटली 103 एंड ल्यूटेशियम तक जाते-जाते वो सिर्फ 80 तक डिक्रीज हो पाती है तो इसको लेंथनाइट कॉन्ट्रैक्शन कहते हैं तो इसका मतलब ये तो कंफर्म है कि लेंथनाइट्स जब हम यहां जाते हैं तो आयनिक रेडियस कम होती है राइट सो लेंथनाइट की ज्यादा लेंथेनियम की ज्यादा होगी और ल्यूटेशियम की कम होगी तो सबसे पहले हम देख लेते हैं ल्यूटेशियम की कम कहां पर है ठीक है तो यहां पर ल्यूटेशियम की एकदम मिनिमम है यहां पर ल्यूटेशियम की ज्यादा है तो ये तो गलत है ठीक है अब हम इन दोनों ऑप्शंस में देखते हैं ल्यूटेशियम की कम है ये तो सही बात है लेंथनियम की ज्यादा होगी सो so, यहां पर लेंथनियम की ल्यूटेशियम से ज्यादा है यहां पर भी ज्यादा है अब नेक्स्ट एलिमेंट आता है मेरे पास ये ये कौन सा किसका है ये सीरीज का थोड़ी है ये इससे ऊपर वाली सीरीज का है ठीक है इससे ऊपर नीचे जाते हैं तो ऑटोमेटिकली साइज हमारा क्या होता है इंक्रीज होता है तो इसका साइज तो ज्यादा होगा या कम होगा ये कौन से ये से ऊपर वाले उसका है जब हम नीचे जाते हैं डाउन दी ग्रुप साइज इंक्रीजेस तो इसका और लेंथेनियम का अगर मैं साइज कंपेयर करती हूं तो किसका ज्यादा होगा लेंथेनियम का होगा तो इसलिए मेरे पास इन दोनों में से मुझे इसको ही देखना था ना इन दोनों को तो ये और ऊपर वाला है इसका साइज कम होगा तो आंसर क्या होगा ये वाला ठीक है व्हाट इज द करेक्ट आंसर ऑप्शन नंबर 3 क्लियर है आर यू ऑल वेल वर्स्ड विद लेंथेनाइट कॉन्ट्रैक्शन from dnf block elements theek hai we are getting questions clear when biosphere is turned into human dominated environment to a simple term hota hai isko hum bolte hain no sphere theek hai uh, which of the following statement is correct about the alkali metal compounds so alkali metal compounds mein remember lithium is showing different properties aur baki fir jo bhi sequence hoga wo dekh lete hain Li I to CSI thermal stability increases. Yes, thermal stability increases down the group. Standard enthalpy of uh, formation becomes less negative. This is also correct. 
के ओ टू रियक्ट विद वॉटर टू फॉर्म के ओ एच एच टू ओ टू नो ये सही है क्या और गलत है सही है इट रियक्ट विद वॉटर टू फॉर्म के ओ एच एच टू ओ टू एंड ओ टू नेक्स्ट लिथियम कैन नॉट डायरेक्टली रियक्ट विथ नाइट्रोजन लिथियम कैन लिथियम रियक्ट विथ नाइट्रोजन टू फॉर्म लिथियम नाइट्राइड एल आई सो लिथियम रियक्ट विथ वॉट नॉ इज इट बैलेंस सो बैलेंस यू कैन डू आई जस्ट अ सेकेंड मैं कर देती हूँ सो लिथियम इज एक्चुअली रिएक्टिंग विथ नाइट्रोजन टू गिव मी वॉट टू गिव मी लिथियम नाइट्राइड सो दिस रिएक्शन इज रॉन्ग राइट सो बैलेंस यू कैन डू वॉट इज द करेक्ट आंसर करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर फोर्थ आइडेंटिफाई द करेक्ट सेट एच टू ओ एस पी थ्री एंगुलर वी नीड टू आइडेंटिफाई द करेक्ट सेट ओके एच टू ओ इज दिस so we have four electron pairs so it will be sp3 hybridized correct angular or bent are same so this is correct nh4 sp3 tetrahedral we all know this we have ammonia here nh3 and here it is forming a coordinate bond so this is nh4 plus this is tetrahedral and it is sp3 hybridized so b bhi sahi hai to humne dekha hame ek option diya tha both 1 and 2 so answer will be both 1 and 2 coming to this one एच थ्री ओ प्लस एस पी टू ट्राइगनल प्लेनर यू कैन चेक आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर फोर्थ द स्टैंडर्ड इलेक्ट्रोड पोटेंशियल ऑफ द फॉलोइंग रिएक्शन इज सो वी आर गिवन दिस रिएक्शन एंड द स्टैंडर्ड इलेक्ट्रोड पोटेंशियल इज गिवन वॉट विल बी द पोटेंशियल वेन द पी एच इज टू सो दिस इज द रिएक्शन विच इज गिवन टू अस वी नीड टू कैलकुलेट द वैल्यू ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोड पोटेंशियल सो नर्स्ट इक्वेशन देख लें मुझे दिख रहा है यहाँ पर आयंस है यहाँ पर भी है यहाँ पर भी है सो so, क्या होता है ई इज इक्वल टू ई नॉट माइनस पॉइंट जीरो फाइव नाइन लॉग बाय एन लॉग ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स बाय रिएक्टेंस ठीक है अप्लाइंग इट हियर सो यहाँ पर लेट्स सी व्हाट इज दिस वन पॉइंट थ्री थ्री माइनस जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव नाइन बाई एन फर्स्ट मुझे देखना पड़ेगा हाउ मेनी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर गेटिंग ट्रांसफर्ड इन दिस रिएक्शन For this, I need to calculate the oxidation state. So here, what is the oxidation state? Plus six for one chromium, plus three for one chromium. But here we have two chromium, so I'll calculate for two chromium, which will be plus twelve. Here for two chromium, it will again be plus six. So how many electrons are transferring? Six electrons. Also, it is already given here, no? अगर आपको नहीं भी दिया होता ऐसे सब नहीं करना है ये तो एक जनरल बताया मैंने बट ऑलरेडी मुझे क्वेश्चन में गिवन है ना हाउ मेनी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर ट्रांसफर्ड सिक्स बट ये मैंने जस्टिफाई किया कैसे सिक्स आया यहाँ पर क्लियर है सो व्हाट इज एन हियर सिक्स नाउ लॉग ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स बाय रिएक्टेंट प्रोडक्ट में क्या है मेरे पास देखो क्रोमियम थ्री प्लस सो क्रोमियम थ्री प्लस का क्या होगा स्क्वायर और क्या है हमारे पास वॉटर वॉटर इज लिक्विड तो लिक्विड का इट विल बी वन लिक्विड की पावर सेवन डिवाइडेड बाय रिएक्टेंट्स में क्या है डाइक्रोमेट और साथ में क्या है एच प्लस आयन सो एच प्लस आयन है एंड इट विल बी रेस टू पावर फोर्टीन वाई बिकॉज दिस वी हैव दिस को एफिशियंट एज फोर्टीन सो वी विल सब्सटीट्यूट ऑल दी वैल्यूज For chromium, we are given the values. Dichromate also, we are given the values, but we are not. We don't have value for H plus. ये कहाँ से आएगा? This we can calculate using pH. So pH is what? Two, two point zero. From here, I can calculate minus log of H plus ions is equal to two. So I can calculate the value of H plus ions. It will be ten raised to power minus two. Right? So I substitute these values here. One point three three minus zero point zero five nine by six log of chromium one. So one square. Water also one one square divided by uh, dichromate again one into H plus raised to power fourteen. So ten raised to power minus two raised to power fourteen. This will be one. When I calculate this, it will be 10 raised to power minus 28. Upper jaega, so it will be 10 raised to power 28, right? So log of 10 raised to power 28 will will be 
सो अप्रॉक्सीमेट वैल्यू विल बी जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव नाइन इन टू ट्वेंटी एट बाय सिक्स यून सॉल्व दिस यू विल गेट द आंसर सो आई थिंक द आंसर विल बी अप्रॉक्सीमेटली वन पॉइंट जीरो फोर फाइव वोल्ट क्लियर सो इन दिस क्वेश्चन दिस वॉज अजी क्वेश्चन on nernst equation remember nernst equation is very very important you should remember this formula e not minus 0.059 by n log of concentration of products divided by concentration of reactants so that's all thank you hello dear students welcome to infinity learn by shri chaitanya this is dr priyanka your zoology faculty and now we are going to discuss the solutions of mock test okay so hope you all are ready for this session so let's see what is the first question on your screen and before starting please don't forget to like and share this session and subscribe infinity learn neat channel so let's see what is the first question which of the following characters is or are present in all homeotherms without any exception we know homeotherms are the animals that can regulate their internal body temperature isn't it so let's see what are the options we have here mammary glands and please note it is written without any exception so we have your mammary glands vv parity dentulous jaw and four chambered heart right now we viviparity means the organisms that give birth to young ones right mammary glands are present in mammals but except for mammals there are other animals as well that are homeotherms isn't it so which are phylums uh, which all phylums are homeotherms homeotherms are aves and mammals right aves and mammals both are homeotherms and uh, when we talk about the amphibians reptiles they are poikilotherms or that means cold blooded animals so these are homeotherms or also known as warm blooded animals that means they can regulate their internal body temperature now vv parity it is written obviously aves are oviparous and there are also oviparous mammals so this will not be the correct answer coming to mammary glands mammary glands are present in mammals but it is not present in aves so we will eliminate this answer dentulous jaw dentulous jaw means jaw with teeth right so it is not there in the birds they have beaks and not teeth so your correct answer for this question is four chambered heart right four chambered heart is present in mammals and in aves both so correct option for this question is four okay four chambered heart understood dear students why the answer will be fourth one now let's move on to our next question So let's read this the main function of cells in an epithelium is to provide protection against chemical and mechanical stresses identify the epithelium so we need to find out the epithelium that will provide protection against mechanical and chemical stresses it could not be glandular epithelium nor ciliated epithelium nor squamous epithelium the correct option will be compound epithelium and what is compound epithelium epithelium which is present in multiple layers okay so correct option will be second one now next question on your screen which of the following is or are present in the elementary canal of cockroach but not but not absent in earthworm the question will be but absent in earthworm okay so which of the following is present in cockroach but absent in earthworm we see intestinal cecca gizzard hepatic cecca and tiflosol tiflosol is there in earthworm right 
Gizard is also there in earthworm. Intestinal cecum is also there. The correct option will be hepatic cecum. We have learned about the digestive system of cockroach. We have seen that hepatic cecum and malpigian tubules are present in cockroach, but hepatic cecum is not present in earthworm. Right? Next question. Inactive digestive enzymes with the prefix pro and a suffix jan. What is prefix? Prefix is the word that is added in front of any word and suffix is added at the end of any word, right? So, are generally found in, okay? So, they are talking about enzymes, for example, pepsinogen or pro, pro renin, pro renin or they are talking about pepsinogen or they are talking about trypsinogen. So basically can you see this gen, this pro, these are prefix and suffixes, right? And uh, when it is present in any, in the name of any enzyme, that means that enzyme is in inactive form. It needs to be activated for working, right? So, prorenin, pepsinogen, trypsinogen, these are inactive forms of enzyme and they are released from stomach and pancreas in the form of gastric juice and pancreatic juice. So, the correct option for this question will be 1. Next question. Which of the following events happen during the mechanism of inspiration? That means during inhalation, we know inspiration or inhalation is an active process right and what happens during this inhalation or inspiration please understand with me the pressure inside the lungs should drop should be reducing uh, should reduce that's why the air will be coming inside your lungs that means the volume of lung should increase and how your volume of lung will increase because of contraction of muscles, diaphragm and external intercostal muscles. So diaphragm and external intercostal muscles will contract, your ribs and sternum will move outward and upward and your diaphragm which is originally dome shaped will be flattened and you can see the volume of your thoracic chamber will increase, pressure will decrease then only there is inhalation. Let's write it down everything. So what happens during inhalation? During inhalation, there is contraction of two muscles. There are contraction of muscles and which are these muscles? The diaphragm. and the external intercostal muscle right and what will happen your sternum and ribs will move outward and inward outward and upward your ribs plus sternum will move outward this is also known as bucket handle movement dear students this is also known as bucket handle movement the ribs and sternum will move outward and upward right and what will happen since diaphragm is contracting it will become flattened right your diaphragm will become flat Okay, so these are the events, look carefully, that will take place during inhalation. Apart from this, volume of your lungs will increase or thoracic chamber will increase and pressure will reduce, right? Now, let's see all the statements given here. Increase in pulmonary volume, increase in pulmonary volume, yes. Increase in intrapulmonary volume pressure no there will be reduction in intrapulmonary pressure pressure inside your lungs decrease in thoracic volume 
नो दर विल बी इंक्रीज इन थोरासिक वॉल्यूम अपवर्ड मूवमेंट ऑफ रिब एंड स्टर्नम यस कंट्रैक्शन ऑफ मसल इन द एबडोम नो सो ए एंड डी आर करेक्ट ओके ए एंड डी ओनली विल बी द करेक्ट ऑप्शन फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन ओके सो लुक दिस क्वेश्चन केयरफुली एंड लेट्स मूव ऑन टू नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट नॉट ऑटो एक्साइटेबल नॉट ऑटो एक्साइटेबल साइनो एट्रियल नोड एवी नोड एवी बंडल ऑल दीज आर द नोडल टिश्यू ओके and these are auto excitable but not anf what is anf okay anf is atrial natri uretic factor atrial natri uretic factor this is a hormone which is released from the walls of atria right and what this hormone will cause this hormone will cause as the name suggests natri uretic it will cause excretion of sodium in urine it will cause excretion of sodium in urine also it will cause vasodilation vasodilation and ultimately the blood pressure will reduce please note this down all these flow charts are very very important for your neat point of view please note this down okay written so correct option for this question will be the fourth one let's move on to our next question the ras in ras the substrate for renin is ras stands for ras is my favorite ras stands for renin angiotensin aldosterone system right renin angiotensin aldosterone system okay now this renin is released from juxta glomerular apparatus of the kidney right so let's re uh, let's make a flow chart to understand what is this ras mechanism right so this renin is released from juxta glomerular apparatus of kidneys right so this renin will convert angiotensinogen into angiotensin this angiotensinogen is a plasma protein which is formed or released from liver and it is there in the blood so this renin will convert angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1 right now this angiotensin 1 will be converted to angiotensin 2 angiotensin 2 right now for this there is as angiotensin converting enzyme 1 this is also converted into 3 but we will go with angiotensin 2 and this one is released from lungs right now this angiotensinogen is released from liver so i will write this as well right and this was released from lung so i will write this as well now right now this angiotensin 2 will go to your adrenal cortex and will stimulate it to release aldosterone please make this flow chart very important for your exam so this angiotensin 2 will go to adrenal cortex and it will release aldosterone right now what this aldosterone will do this is a mineralocorticoid so it will cause reabsorption of sodium and water from dct and collecting duct 
so it will cause reabsorption of sodium ions and water from dct and collecting duct right now this is one more function of this angiotensin 2 and this function is to is to cause vasoconstriction is to cause vasoconstriction so this will also cause vasoconstriction right now because of this vasoconstriction and because of this reabsorption of sodium and water what will happen ultimately your blood pressure will increase so ultimately there will be increase in the blood pressure okay so what is the function of this ras mechanism this ras mechanism helps in increasing the blood pressure okay this is renin angiotensin aldosterone system and ultimately this mechanism will increase the blood pressure so this is whole ras mechanism why i am telling you here why because my student always forget this ras mechanism and they do not uh, understand the depth of this ras mechanism and ultimately your question becomes wrong so let's see what is this question again in the ras the substrate for renin is okay substrate here means on which your renin will act so we can take it from here that renin will act on angiotensinogen and will convert it into angiotensin 1 so here our answer will be angio tensinogen without fail okay please uh, note down this okay take a screenshot this is very important for your neat examination correct option for this question is 2 done everyone now let's move on to our next question find out the polymerized protein from the following polymerized protein means a polymer protein that is made up of several units of amino acids so is it troponin and tropomyosin troponin is present in only three subunits right it is not polymerized actin and myosin yes correct option will be actin and myosin here these are the polymerized protein okay in your muscles next question given below are the bones in human endoskeleton how many of these are formed by fusion of other bones sacral bone yes coccygeal bone yes coxal bone yes but not scapular bone so these three will be present or for formed by the fusion of other bones your answer will be here three right sacral bone is formed by fusion of five bones coccygeal by fusion of four bones and each coxal bone is formed by the fusion of three bones ilium ischium and pubis okay next question rods and cones are the photoreceptor cells of the human retina the dash vision is the function of rods so rods are responsible for visions at night okay which is also known as scotopic vision so a will be scotopic okay and cones are responsible for vision in the light and also for colors so this will be photopic vision okay this will be photopic vision and vision in the vision is the function of rods and dash vision is the function of cones so it will be photopic vision right uh, the rods contain C which is a derivative of D so rods contain visual purple which is derivative of vitamin A we know this these are the lines of NCRT vitamin A is very important for night vision 
or scotopic vision. That's why if there is deficiency of vitamin A, it will lead to what? Night blindness, isn't it? So, let's see what will be the correct option. Rods and cones are the photoreceptor cells of the human retina. The dash vision is the function of rods. Rods will have been scotopic vision. And function of cones is photopic vision. And it is visual purple that is derived from vitamin A. So that means your correct option will be first one without any confusion. Okay. Now let's see what is the next question on your screen. Read the following statement and, found out, and find out the correct statement or option. Both cortisol and glucagon stimulate the process of gluconeogenesis and what is gluconeogenesis I have told you in the last class gluconeogenesis is formation of glucose from non-carbohydrate source like amino acid and fatty acid okay so that will increase your blood glucose level yes cortisol does that and gly uh, glucagon also does that so this is the correct statement right Steroid hormones and iodothyronins, iodothyronins are the thyroxine hormones, requires second messenger for their mechanism of action. Please pay attention to this point. The steroid hormones and the iodothyronins, they can, they can cross your plasma membrane of the cell because they are lipid soluble. So, they won't require generation of secondary messenger. No, they themselves can go inside the cell and they will bind to the intracellular receptor or which are known as cytoplasmic or nuclear receptors, right? So, they don't require secondary messenger. No, secondary messenger is required by the proteinaceous hormone. They cannot go or enter the cell because they are lipid insoluble. So, they will need some secondary messenger, right? So, this is wrong. Somatostatin and vasopressin have the same source of production. Now, see, we know, this is a beautiful question, we know that vasopressin is ADH. It is released from posterior pituitary, but it is formed in hypothalamus. And same is the case with somatostatin. Somatostatin is also formed in hypothalamus. So, this is the correct statement, right? Next statement. PTH. Parathyroid hormo hormone is hypocalcemic hormone. No. Parathyroid hormone is hypercalcemic hormone. It will increase the calcium level in the blood. Hypocalcemic hormone is which one? It is calcitonin calcitonin is hypocalcemic hormone okay tct that is uh, thyrocalcitonin is hypercalcemic no it should be hypocalcemic so this is a wrong statement so which are the correct statement let's figure it out a was correct and c was correct so a and c only correct option here was two let's move on to our next question which of the following options are correct with respect to the phylum and their general characteristics? Tenophora, bioluminescence and complets. Yes, tenophora are, are uh, sea walnuts. They are bioluminescent, they emit light and yes, they have eight comb plates. Porifera have spongocele, triploblastic organism. No, these are diploblastic organism. Ascalmins, muscular gut, monoecious, they have muscular gut, muscular pharynx, but they are dioecious, male and female are separate, they even show sexual dimorphism, right? Echinodermata, water vascular system, yes, it is there. All are living in fresh water, no, all are marine, they are exclusively marine. So, tenophoras are exclusively marine, then... No. Echinodermata are exclusively marine, then hemichordata are exclusively marine, right? Remember this. So, correct option here will be first one. Now, let's move on to our next question. Which of the 
फॉलोइंग आर कंपोज ऑफ इन वॉलेंट्री एंड अनस्ट्राइटेड मसल्स इन वॉलेंट्री नॉट अंडर आर कंट्रोल अनस्ट्राइटेड नो डार्क एंड लाइट बैंड सो इट विल बी इन द गैस्ट्रिक वॉल एंड द आर्टरी वॉल ओके द इंटरनल ऑर्गन्स आर लाइन बाय स्मूद मसल्स सो दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट स्मूद मसल्स राइट नाउ लेट्स मूव ऑन टू आर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ड्यूरिंग विच डेज ऑफ मेन्स्ट्रल साइकिल डू द ईस्ट्रोजन लेवल्स राइजेस ग्रेजुअली gradually means slowly we know that estrogen is released from growing follicles right so during the pre ovulatory phase or at the time of follicular phase the estrogen level should increase so 1 to 3 days 9 to 14 days 14 to 15 days or 3 to Five days, right? So we know that ovulation will take place at the fourteenth day, and before that, the estrogen level should increase, right? So correct option will be nine to fourteen days, because now here at the time of nine to fourteen days, the follicles are slowly, slowly maturing, follicular cells are proliferating. So ultimately, they will release estrogen, and the estrogen level will gradually increase. So correct option for this question is second one. Next question. In oogenesis, this is my favorite question. Which cells are produced after the first meiotic division? Right. So after the first meiotic division, secondary oocyte is released, and this is known as ovulation. Right. so after the first meiotic division secondary oocyte is formed and it will be released okay at the time of ovulation now only after this secondary oocyte is fertilized there will be completion of the second meiotic division and then only the ovum will be formed so ovulation is of the structure only so after first meiotic division there will be formation of secondary oocyte and obviously first polar body after fertilization only this meiosis 2 will be complete and there will be formation of ovum and the second polar body so here the option is 3 next question in an ectopic pregnancy what is ectopic pregnancy when there is implantation in any other site other than the uterus it could be in the ovary it could be in the fallopian tube it could be in the cervix so basically fallopian tube uh implantation which is known as tubal pregnancy is the most common type of ectopic pregnancy right and it could be fatal as well right it could lead to rupturing of fallopian tube so in an ectopic pregnancy the fertilized egg usually usually implants in fallopian tube right normally it will implant in uterus and it could also implant in cervix or ovary but usually it will implant in fallopian tube which is known as tubal pregnancy okay next question choose the correct features of a ichthyosaurs ichthyosaurs from the following so ichthyosaurs are extinct that we know for sure it is a reptile like fish or fish like reptile since it is saurus it means it is a reptile and it is a fish like reptile that used to live under water so it is a fish like reptile it is extinct and uh, whether it is terrestrial or aquatic let's see okay it is it should be aquatic right b c and e should be the correct option why because ichthyosaurus is a reptile that lives in water right so it is an aquatic organism so correct option here is one next question if a couple who are carriers for sickle cell anemia 
decides to become see they are carriers heterozygous for sickle cell anemia decides to become parent what will be the odds that the children will be also carriers see if uh, there is a marriage between heterozygous individual who are heterozygous for sickle cell anemia there are chance that 25 percent of individual that 25 percent individual will be affected 25 percent individual will be normal and 50 percent will be the carriers so out of four progenies two will be the carriers okay so correct option here will be second one Next question, identify the incorrect set from the following, thalassemia is anemia, yes, down syndrome is associated with palm, crease, furrowed tongue, yes, we need to find out the incorrect one, phenyl ketonuria is related to mental retardation, yes, and Turner syndrome is gynecomastia, gynecomastia is development of breast in males, right, so in Turner syndrome, it is uh, denoted by XO type of uh, sex chromosomes that means uh, here the phenotype will be poorly developed female okay with poor uh, poorly developed sexual characteristics right so the breast will be poorly developed in case of Turner syndrome not gynecomastia okay so the wrong statement is the fourth one next question which of the following does not exhibit adaptive radiation does not exhibit adaptive radiation and what is adaptive radiation that means from one single species there are formation of different type of species we have your marsupials we know australian australian marsupials are classic example of adaptive radiation even placental mammals darwin finches are also example of adaptive radiations isn't it the finches they develop different types of beaks because of their distribution in various islands of Galapagos right because of the availability of food there their beaks changed right so that is also a case of adaptive radiation but not humans okay let's move on to our next question the symptoms of malaria appears immediately symptoms of malaria that is fever and chills when will this happen after the bite of female anopheles, no, immediately the female anopheles has bitten you and you will feel fever and chills. No, this is not the case. After the life cycle in mosquito, no. After the life cycle in the human itself, you will experience, isn't it? You, uh, this malaria symptom will not wait for you to be bitten by another mosquito and then the life cycle will complete there and then you will experience fever and chill. No immediately after hepatic cycle or after the erythrocytic cycle correct option will be after the erythrocytic cycle uh, when there is rupture of rbc there will be release of hemozoin in the blood now this hemozoin is responsible for fever and chills so your correct option here will be fourth one right next question antiviral proteins produced by virus infected cells are interferons so what are interferons? Interferons are the chemicals released by the viral infected cells that will prevent the normal cells from further viral infection. So these are very important. Interferons are the antiviral proteins. Okay. Next question, match the following. Choose the correct answer from the quotes given below. Jersey is improved dairy breed isn't it jersey cow gives lots of high quality milk rohu rohu labio rohita is edible freshwater fish yes very tasty leghorn leghorn is improved chicken breed and hilsa is edible marine fish yes favorite fish of bengalis including me okay so let's match uh, it. A will be matched with uh, 4. A will be matched with 4. B will be matched with 3. C will be matched with... C will be matched with 1. Wait, wait, wait. C will be matched with... Where? 2, sorry. 
and uh, D will be matched with 1. Okay, so correct option is the first one. A will be matched with 4. Let's check again. Yes, B will be matched with 3. Yes, absolutely correct. So correct option for this question will be the first one. Let's move on to our next question. Which of the following cells secrete hormone insulin? Straightforward question. Beta cells of islets of Langerhans from pancreas will secrete insulin. So your answer will be beta cells. Find out the correct diagrammatic representation of organismic response with respect to regulators. So which of the following graph is showing the graph of regulators it is the third one what are the regulators these organism are able to regulate their internal body temperature right or internal body environment okay so their internal body environment will be constant so third graph will exhibit the diagrammatic representation of organism with respect to regulators these are conformers and these are partial regulators so correct option here was three next question which of the following organism are generally not represented in a food web food web that is interconnection of food chain decomposers producers herbivores and consumers producers consumer and herbivores are included what are not included are decomposers right there is no place for decomposers in the food web Next question. India has dash percentage of the world's land area. Its share of the global species diversity is an impressive 8.1%. So correct option will be 2.4 and 8.1%. India has 2.5%, 2.4% of the world's land area and it shares global species diversity an impressive 8.1 percent just imagine so correct option here was fourth one again match the following questions for you ozone thickness is measured in dobson's unit skin cancer is caused by uv rays cfc chlorofluorocarbon is used in refrigerators El Nino effect. El Nino effect is based on temperature. So let's see what is the correct answer. A will be matched with 4. B will be matched with 1. C will be matched with 2. And D will be matched with 3. So correct option here is 1. Okay. Let's move on to our next question. Choose the incorrect from the following incorrect. Enterokinase and lysozyme are non-digestive enzyme. Yes, this itself is correct, but we need to find the incorrect one. Missiles and chylomicrons helps in absorption of fats. Yes. Okay. Uh, chylomicrons are small fat globules which are covered by proteins, right? So it helps in absorption of fat it is absorbed in lacteals lacteals are the lymphatic vessels which or lymphatic capillaries which are present in villi villi crypts of liverkun is present in stomach no this is wrong villi and crypts of liverkun is present in intestine okay marasmus and kosciorkar uh, are the diseases due to protein energy malnutrition <coughs> absolutely correct so incorrect uh, matched pair was the third one let's move on to our next question oxygenated blood carries more oxygen to the tissues yes and deoxygenated blood carries more carbon dioxide to the lungs yes this is possible in the circulation that we have and we have a double circulation correct option will be complete double circulation isn't it we have four chambers of heart two atria two ventricles absolutely separated from one another right so in our body there is no mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood no so correct option will be complete double circulation 
which one of the following hormone acts specifically to decrease the secretion of hormones by other endocrine gland prolactin no it helps in formation of milk in the mammary gland oxytocin it causes contraction of smooth muscles especially uh, the myoepithelial cells of the mammary glands and also it helps in uterine contraction cholecystokinin pancreozymin it helps in contraction of gall bladder to release bile juice and it also stimulate pancreas to uh, release pancreatic juice rich in enzymes correct option here is somatostatin this is antagonist to growth hormone antagonist to growth hormone and it is released from hypothalamus and pancreas both okay let's move on to our next question memory and communication are the function of cerebellum cerebrum midbrain or hypothalamus correct option will be cerebrum okay next question artificial active immunization artificial active immunization means when you introduce heat killed microbes or attenuated microbes or toxins for your body to form antibodies against it that is what is artificial active immunization so we have your weakened pathogens anti venom preformed anti bodies and antibiotics obviously the correct option will be weakened pathogens or attenuated pathogens okay next again i'm asked the following question for you related to brain corpus callosum corpus callosum is the nerve fibers that connect your right and left cerebral hemisphere so corpus callosum will be matched with four brain because cerebral hemisphere is present in four brain corpora quadri gemina is a part of mid brain corpus luteum is present in ovary and corpora cavernosa are the tissues erectile tissues in the penis right so let's see what will be the correct option corp uh, a will be matched with 3 a will be matched with 3 so you are done here b will be matched with 4 C will be matched with two and D will be matched with one. Okay, so correct option here is option four. Okay, hope you guys are enjoying the session. Please don't forget to like and share the session. Invite your friends as well and don't forget to subscribe Infinity Learn Need Channel. Okay, so next is read the following statements. So there are four statements. Let's read it one by one. Devil fish and cuttle fish are the members of the large phylum. Largest phylum. Largest phylum is Arthropoda. And devil fish belongs to Mollusca. Cuttle fish belongs to again Mollusca. So this is wrong. Tape worms are flat worms. Yes. Both cat fish and dog fish have similar type of exoskeleton and endoskeleton as well. No. Cat fishes are bony fishes. dog fishes are cartilaginous fishes so this is wrong right we know that our bony fishes have uh, tenoid or ganoid scales and uh, cartilaginous fishes have placoid scales so this is wrong right and even the endoskeleton is bony in case of bony fishes or ostic thighs and is made up of cartilage in case of cartilaginous fishes or chondritic thighs so this is wrong both sea walnut and sea cucumber exhibit radial symmetry yes sea walnuts belong to phylum tenophora and sea cucumbers belong to phylum echinodermata and they have radial symmetry we know now that in echinodermata larva have bilateral symmetry but adult have radial symmetry now correct statement let's see what is the correct set of statements b is correct d is correct so b and d so your answer becomes Four. Let's move on to our next question. Which of the following is the common characteristic of both parasitism and commensalism? In parasitism, 
the parasite is uh, benefited but the host is harmed that means it this relationship should be plus minus relationship but what happens in commensalism one is benefited and the another species or the host species is neither harmed nor benefited so it should be plus zero relationship right so both interacting interacting species are benefited no both interacting species live close together yes obviously one species is killed and an another species is benefited no both the species belong to the same taxonomic group no right so correct option here was two given below are the ecosystem coral reef desert sugarcane field tropical rainforest so these are some ecosystem which of the above can be included in high productive category so high productive category will be the coral reef sugarcane field tropical rain field exclude desert so correct option will be a c and d a c and d is given in option number 3 so correct option for this question is the third one next question read the following statements norway has lesser ecosystem diversity than india this is right temperate areas have undergone frequent glaciations in the past right so both the statement are correct your correct option here will be the third one okay now let's move on to our next question eco sanitation is a sustainable system for handling these are eco sanitations are eco friendly toilets so your answer will be agricultural waste human excreta industrial waste or biomagnification it will be human excreta because they are they are uh toilets right next arrange the following major features of human embryonic development in the correct order as per their occurrence these are the lines given in your ncrt see how beautifully this question is framed from one one line of ncrt from a single paragraph now you need to find the sequence of the embryonic development let's see eyelids separate eyelashes are formed oh sabse pehle embryo heart is formed isn't it embryo heart is formed uh, even at one month right so the first will be embryo heart is formed so d your answer should start from d so we have 1 2 and 3 4 is eliminated right then after the heart is formed uh fetus develops limbs and digits fetus develops limbs and digits yeah so it will be b it will be d and then b limbs and external genitalia genital organs are well developed after b uh, uh, d and b it should be c and at the last i remember this last one that eyelids separate and eyelashes are formed so it should be a then so d b c and a correct option should be first one okay okay because at the last eyelids will be uh, separated and eyelashes are formed at the last remember this and first is the development of heart now let's move on to our next question what do male condoms offer that other forms of birth control do not protection from stds right protection from venereal diseases so cheapest to use least chance of failure best protection against sti that is sexually transmitted infection this is the correct option for this question the key concept of darwinian theory is branching descent and natural selection use and disuse was given by lamarck okay then uh, mutation and saltation was given by hugo de vries correct option for darwin is branching descent and natural selection discussed in his book right match the following question related to drugs from the chapter human health and disease okay my favorite part so barbiturates diazepam clonazepam helps in treating insomnia insomnia is 
inability to sleep, sleeplessness, right? Coke, coke, uh, coke or uh, cocaine, you can say, is uh, produces a sense of euphoria. It should be euphoria. So this is the Correct match, B will be matched with 3, produces a sense of euphoria. And what is euphoria? Extreme happiness, right? Charas and ganja, okay? Charas and ganja are cannabinoids that we get from cannabis sativa. And this charas and ganja or cannabinoids uh, will affect the cardiovascular system. And this smack, it should not be smock, it should be smack. Okay, and this smack is actually heroin that is diacetyl morphine. So now let's see what will be the correct answer. A will be matched with 4, B will be matched with 3, C will be matched with 2 and D will be matched with 1. So correct option will be the first one. Understood? Now let's move on to our next question. Which of the following does not cause cancer? Okay, we have four options. Proto-oncogenes, viral oncogenes, X-rays and gamma rays and UV rays. This will cause cancer, this will cause cancer, this will cause cancer. This proto-oncogenes will not cause cancer. These are inactivated genes which is present in our genetic makeup and when these genes are activated by uh, the agents, carcinogenic agents, then they will cause cancer, right? So oncogenes will cause cancer and not proto-oncogenes, right? Let's move on to our next question. Cuboidal brush border epithelium is seen in. So cuboidal brush border epithelium right will be seen in PCT ascending limb of Henle no descending limb of loop of Henle no Bowman's capsule no correct option will be proximal culminated tubule this is the brush border epithelium brush border cuboidal epithelium and it will increase the surface area for absorption right let's see what is the next question which of the following is the correct expression of skeletal structure and the number of bones pectoral girdle six pectoral girdle consists of your uh, clavicles that is the collarbone and the scapula right Cranium has 14 bones, facial bones are 14. Remember, I always remember this number because every time it is asked in need. Phalanges are also 14, facial bones are 14, remember this. Limbs are 60, see 30, 30, 30, 30. In four limbs you have 60 bones, in hind limbs you have 60 bones, total should be 120, not 60. Ribs are 24, yes, there are 24. Oh, sorry, there are 12 pair of ribs, so it will make 24 ribs, okay, out of which we know that two pairs are of floating ribs, okay, which are attached to the vertebral column at, uh, in the dorsal side, but they are not attached to any structure in front, so that's why they are known as floating ribs, they protect our kidneys. Uh, three pairs are known as false ribs, they are attached dorsally to the vertebral column but anteriorly they are not connecting to the sternum directly right so that's why they are known as false ribs right so correct option here is fourth one again one more match the following type of questions blood group a b a b and o is given you need to find out which antigen which antibody is present and which donor group will be able to donate blood okay so according to landsteiner according to landsteiner's law if a particular agglutinogen is present on the surface of RBC, the corresponding agglutinin will be absent from the plasma. At that time, agglutinogen was antigen. 
and agglutinin was agglutinin was the antibody right now that means if a person is having a blood group the antigen present on the surface of rbc should be a only and the antibody in the plasma should be beta or b antibodies right similarly if a person is having o blood group there will not be any antigen on the rbc and both the antibody should be there in the plasma if a person is having ab blood group then both a and b antigen should be on the surface of rbc and no antibody should be there in the plasma this we know so let's figure it out what will be the correct option blood group a will have a antigen on the surface not b so this is wrong second one b blood group antigen on rbc is b antibody in the plasma is anti a and donor group is a and o no it should be b and o uh, in blood group ab antigen present is a and b antibody should be absent from here right and in blood group o antigen present is a and b no antigen is present na so let's see what is the correct answer i think i think this will be the correct answer if i change if i change this okay let's read it once again and figure out if i am making a mistake or there is some typing error so in blood group a antigen b will not be present so this is wrong in 3 ab blood group a and b both antigen should be there antibodies should not be there and leave it so this is also wrong so in o blood group no antigen should be there so yes correct option will be two only but here the donors group should be b let's write it down right so correct option for this question will be second one okay let's move on to our next question all of the following hormones are secreted by endocrine cells of different parts of gastrointestinal tract except secretin cholecystokinin erythropoietin and gastrin see all of them are secreted from git except from erythropoietin erythropoietin is secreted from juxtaglomerular apparatus of kidney okay and it helps in erythropoiesis that is formation of rbcs right so correct option here is 3 choose the incorrect statement post synaptic potential are either excitatory or inhibitory incorrect yes that is right unmyelinated unmyelinated nerve fibers are devoid of schwann cells this is wrong see whether your nerve fiber is myelinated or non myelinated schwann cells will be there it is only that schwann cells are not secreting myelin sheath in non myelinated nerve fiber very important question okay given in your ncert and repeatedly asked in exam right we know that in our peripheral nervous system schwann cells secrete myelin sheath but who secretes myelin sheath in our central nervous system it is oligodendrocytes okay remember this resting nerve cell has greatest permeability for potassium hmm yes yes permeability for potassium is more at the time of resting stage right now coming to next question transmission of an impulse across electrical synapse is very similar to impulse conduction along a single axon absolutely correct okay what happens in electrical synapse there is no synaptic cleft so the nerve will directly transmit from one uh, neuron to another right there is no release of uh, neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft no binding to the receptors no nothing like this right so correct option for this question is 2 so that was all for today dear students hope you all have enjoyed this session i have enjoyed personally okay solving these questions so we come daily at 7 pm with your mock test solutions live on infinity learn neat channel please always join us okay and we will be coming live on 17th of july after your neat examinations with all the answer keys and solutions please don't forget to join us 
then so bye bye dear students take care see you in the next class